Okay. Okay, oopsie daisy. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh -huh. So am I actually live? I don't know how to tell for sure. It says I'm live. Okay, I guess I'll just wait. It does not appear that anybody's here. Well, it is a little early. Well, you know, I don't have anything else to do. I might as well just sit here and wait. Aha! Or does the thing just not launch off until... Hey! How you doing? I have a person. <laughs> So I'm not even sure what to talk about today. I'm just going to wait till the people show up unless you have it. Nigel, hello. Well, I guess I forgot to say hello to Sarah directly. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Nigel. How are you guys doing? Where are you guys at geographically? How's the sound, by the way? Can you hear me and all that? Hmm. Is it not working? Okay, so you can hear me then, yeah? Ontario, Canada. Okay, good, good, good. Good, good, good. Glad for that. Have you guys had decent weather? I, I have a friend that lives in uh, um, near Chester, and uh, he says it has been rainy over there a little bit for in his part of the, the UK. Hi, Mike. How are you? Buttery smooth. Nice. <laughs> uh, so I don't really have anything, uh, you know, in mind to to ramble about. I was just gonna you know, let you guys kind of drive it. There you go. Nice. <laughs> nice emoji, Mike. <laughs> Fantastic. So, <laughs> I guess I have dead air here going, right? I guess that's the, the criminal thing for all things televised, isn't it? And I have a, I armed myself with a bit of uh, it's been raining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in the UK, man. Um, well, I've been there a few times, but well, three times, I guess. Um, once back in the summer of 85, I was in West Yorkshire in a place called Hebden Bridge. And it rained uh, pretty much every day, but it didn't rain all day. You know what I mean? It just like rained a little bit and then it didn't rain. And I guess that's what they call that. Is that near the Pennines or something like that? Wow, it looks like there's a huge delay between what I'm saying and then what I'm seeing over there on the YouTube live thing. Interesting. I wish I had an interesting story to tell anybody. Eric says, stop by and say, da, 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 da. Well, it's good to know, man. Eric, welcome, welcome, welcome. Cloudscape. Kaczynski. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh man, yeah, the 
that's a good one. You know, math major and the whole thing, huh? Right? <laughs> Shushbeard. From GA, like Georgia is in the US, G Georgia, or Georgia is in the country, Georgia. <laughs> Mm. Don't get old. Your spine will start creaking and joints will creak. And you know, I don't know. If you can figure out how to not get old, let me know. Okay, right on. Georgia, USA. Well, I've been asking everybody else, how's the weather over there? And also, did I ask you, Sarah, about Canada? Did I, did I blow that off accidentally? I'm sorry, I'm just you know, curious. And plus, I need something to babble about here, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Until I get rolling or somebody sparks a, a thing for me to get going. But Feel like dead air, right? You know. Maybe I should go get a book or something so I could just read from while I'm, you know, waiting for people to ask me questions or something. Highs in the seventies, lows in the upper forties. That's not bad, huh? That's not so bad. I could, I could tolerate that. Yeah, I, I like warm weather, but not super warm. When I was younger, I liked very warm weather, but now I'm, you know, yeah, 70s is a good good place. I could even tolerate low 80s, I suppose, but yeah, 70s is a nice, nice place to be, I think. I need to trim my mustache. Keep getting tea onto it. <clears throat> ah, getting cold there, huh? Okay. Yeah, I guess it's the, it is the season, isn't it? You know, October. Alestro Bakai or Bacal or Bakai Bakai. Two a.m. and raining. What a surprise here in the UK. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked the videos. Yeah, that's late for you guys, huh? In the UK. I wasn't expecting that many people from Europe, but you know, yeah, whoever's here is welcome, yeah? Uh, the only social media page I currently have right now is a Facebook page. Um, I have one for both uh, the Bill Max Fox PAX page, and I have, well, I have, well, I suppose I do have the, the, the uh, two other YouTube channels. I try to remember to put the descriptions in my, or put the links in my descriptions. Um, sometimes I think I forget, um, but uh, yeah, it's at WC Postman is one of them, and then at Three Monks in a Tub is the other one. Um, and I have a Facebook page on Three Monks in a Tub, although I haven't put most on there lately. It's kind of been just sitting there, kind of fallow, I guess you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm th I've been thinking about you know do, be, I need to become more you know social media savvy I just I just I don't know I kind of blow it off most of the time here's what we have here nine lives nine I guess right okay Newfoundland Canada Bill hey how's it going man more Canadians do either of you follow the what's the guy Reverend Ed Trevers is that his name I'm bad with names he's a Canadian guy He's a, a Christian dude. I mean, you know, I realize that I'm an atheist, but, you know, I think I mentioned before, it's like, just because, you know, I can I can find insight from, you know, whoever is a cool human, you know? Guinea Piggers D from Virginia. Well, hi, how's it going in Virginia? 
and Bin J from San Diego. You know, I used to live down there for, well, uh, yeah, a long time, off and on between there and here, uh, San Francisco Bay Area and San Diego. You know, um, I used to live in La Mesa. I lived a little bit in El Cajon. Here we go. I was looking at one of your old videos from ten years ago, and the comments were comments from five years ago saying he's still using his account. He must have decided to stop posting. Hmm. I'm not sure what to make of that, but yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> I guess what is it? It's like I think it was 2012 is when I first started the account for well I mean I had it well you know I guess that's yeah I used to have just my WC Postman account I don't remember how long I had that but then I started Bill Max Fox packs for the purpose of making ASMR and I think that was in 2012 I think it was like September of 2012 is when I created that and uh, yeah raining all day Well, you know, I guess rain is good. As long as it's not, you know, the horrible hurricane rain coming in, you know, from something like that. That would be, you know. The only time I've been in a hurricane was when I was on a cruise ship. And it was a little unnerving because the boat was, you know. But it actually wasn't too bad. So I don't know. It couldn't have been that bad of a hurricane, right? You know, because we survived it reasonably well. It, you know, rocked the boat some, but, you know. I got, well, I was hung over, so I was seasick. <laughs> I was just miserable. But yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm wondering what the topics will become this evening. Last time, what did we end up talking about a lot last time? Yeah, I don't necessarily want to have to rehash things, but just trying to jog my memory and see if I could come up with something that so I don't bore you guys to tears while I'm, you know, yeah. set up a live thing and then people come and it's like, yeah, that was dull as hell. <laughs> okay, there's a game everyone's playing. You have to drop fruit like Tetris board. But they're the same kind of merge together. Huh. What's the, what would be the name of this game? I am unfamiliar with it. I'm wondering if it's something I could fold into, you know, maybe do a gameplay version of it. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about maybe trying to, you know, bring more games into that kind of idea, like maybe Klotsky or something like that. Dark Light Connections, same site as Wordle. Uh, you know, I have not. Um, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't. I'll have to look into that. So I, I'm not even sure what that's about. Is, I wonder, is it like, um, uh, I wonder if it's similar to Only Connect. You know, that uh, it's a UK game show. Um, although, what, what, uh, I wonder how that would work. Unless they did it from the, like, uh, off the wall or the, what do they call it? The wall, right? Those of you in the UK, you guys, uh, Victoria Corn Mitchell with Only Connect, right? Is that still going or is that, because I see it only in reruns here on YouTube, but I don't know if it's still a show that's actually happening in you know, real time anymore or not, but that's a pretty challenging show. That's way more uh, challenging than any, you know, US game show on TV. Oh, thanks, Timbo. I appreciate the compliment. You know, I try, you know, I mean, th I mean, there's some people who I really admire, but not, well, like Ephemeral Rift, he's, you know, pretty amazing, but he kind of is as much performance artist as he is ASM artist, you know what I mean? He, he's a pretty groovy cat. Yeah, I like him. I also like uh, Air Light a lot, but, you know, she's, well, she lives in Ukraine, so, you know, her life is, I haven't even heard from her in a gazillion years, so I don't know what's going on there, but. Oh well, you know, yeah, I, I I like I like the only connect quite a bit, but I have to admit, I you know, there's sometimes I stop watching it because it goes well over my head. Part of it is because you know it's you know a difficult thing, and part of it is because I don't get a lot of the cultural references. You know, I just 
And it's just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff I can follow along, but, uh, and even once in a while I can even, you know, reasonably compete on a question here and there, but. Uh, Hey, Will, thank you. Best wishes back to you as well. I can play it in the browser, so. Okay. What's the name of it again, though? Did you tell me that and I missed it already? For the fruit, for the fruit thing. Timelines, I don't know. <laughs> oh, nice. Got some people who kind of are in the similar area. There. Nice, nice, nice. You know, thinking of uh, TV game shows. This is well, you know odd tangent, but I might as well because I'm just babbling, aren't I? Um, well, from back in the day, my childhood, there was a, a TV show, Match Game. Well, I guess they've had versions of it with, the, what is it, Alec Baldwin did one. Or I don't know if he's still doing it, but um, uh, the uh, I, I can't, Gene Rayburn, I think, is the guy from back in the 70s. And uh, it was pretty funny. I, I found it on YouTube. There's a bunch of old reruns you can watch on YouTube for Match Game 73 and the like. It's pretty good. Okay, let me catch up with some of these contents here, or comments. Okay, Suica game. All right, I'll we'll have to make sure I remember to come back to the... Um, okay, all right, I will come back here and make sure I remember to look that up. I'm going to look into that so if I can add it to my gameplay stuff. Thanks, Nine Lives. And okay, so Chad Neville says, Hi, Bill. Oh, my board card games. Um, you know, I haven't played a lot of board games or card games lately. Okay, so I used to play um, Cribbage a lot. I was quite good at it. Um, if I hadn't played it in so long, I don't know if I'd still be any good at it. Um, I used to play backgammon quite a bit. Um, I think I even made a video about uh, just kind of the basics of backgammon a while back. Uh, but again, I don't play it very often either. Um, for a while, I've dabbled in bridge, but I'm I'm okay. Well, here's the thing. It's, 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 I'm okay doing the tricks. You know, I mean, that's fine. Um, it's getting the contract that's uh, difficult for me with bridge. If, if any of you play bridge, you'll know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I'm not even going to bother trying to explain bridge. It's, you know, and uh, Samuel, hello. All right, hello, back to you, from, you know. Well, I've asked everybody else, how's the weather in Ireland? I'm going to assume it's, you know, well, it's up in the, in those set of islands up there, right? You're probably having some little bit of rain and the like, I imagine, yeah. Although, yeah, you could hear distant enough that maybe the weather would be significantly different yeah you know I tend to kind of think of all of the British Isles and as kind of a similar clumped together thing in my head um, not necessarily politically but you know just geographically oh and just for a, a, a caveat here at the beginning I'm not going to talk about anything political today about any of the nonsense going on in the world I just let's keep this to be you know a, a non you know, confrontational, non-violence, non any of that stuff, right? Well, so that that'll that so just don't even bother bringing it up anyway. Um, okay, Demeter, thank or Dem Demeter, Demeter. How would you? I mean, I guess like the the goddess, right? Demeter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of was my guess, Samuel. We have a couple of other people from. Uh, the United Kingdom across that little Irish Sea. I, I don't know. It's, what's the distance? In my mind, it seems like it's not that far. Um, it seems like that it's. I guess it's more distance between Ireland and Great Britain than between uh, than there is in the Channel, isn't there? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'd have to look at a map. Am I good at crosswords? Uh, no. I play. I do play a crossword online. I, I don't remember the the link for it. Um, maybe I'll put it into a gameplay in the future. Uh, it's a easy. I have to play an easy crossword because otherwise I get frustrated. <laughs> uh, for Halloween, you know, um, you know, I don't know. I haven't dressed up for Halloween in quite a while. 
and uh, okay, yeah, Demeter, good goddess, yay, goddesses. <laughs> um, you know, um, when's the last time I did dress up? Hmm, it's been years. I don't think I've dressed up since I've had this beard. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Not, nothing comes to my mind. Um, you know, maybe I should. The thing is, we don't really get uh, kids don't come around here anymore. Um, I'm not even sure my sister buys candy anymore. Um, but, the, but the entrance to my the space I live in is, you know, nobody ever just walks right by it, so nobody even bothers knocking on my door. Um, but uh, and they usually put decorations up in the front yard. But uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so let's give you some more comments here. Uh, yeah, okay, an hour from London to Dublin. Okay. Halloween dress up role play. You know, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's something to consider. I'm not much of a role play guy. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of, I, yeah, I don't think I'm really much of an actor. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can give it a go. I, I, you know, I'll have to think about it. Um, yeah, I guess that's the thing with the beard, right? You know? Um, you know, here's the thing I thought about trying to do. This would be a thing I'd want to do with somebody, though. Uh, so I don't know. So you know, this isn't this. Don't get too excited because I, it will probably not happen. But it's a thing that you know rolls around in my head. Is um, I quite like the story of um, the Count of Monte Cristo, and um, I think there's I could do uh, oh the, the priest that he finds you know that's on the other side of the wall that teaches him all the stuff and then how he becomes to know where the you know the treasure is and all of that. Um, I think it would be interesting to uh, do an ASMR thing when they're first discovering each other, right? You know, with, with the scratches on the other side of the wall kind of thing. You know what I mean? It seems like that could lend itself to some pretty cool, um, you know, kind of ASMR thing. I don't know quite how it would work, but I've, I've considered that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to roll it around in my head some more, you know, to think what's what. Um, Dumbledore costume. Yeah, you know, all I'd really need to do is get a robe, huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I already got some weird, you know, goofy glasses, and I've already got the beard, right? So I just need a robe, and, and you know, there I am, Dumbledore. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen a couple of the Harry Potter movies. I've never read any of the books, but uh, um, hey, Space Cowboy, how's it going, man? Good to see you back. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Nine Lives, why not? You know, it's mostly just because I, well, first off, I'm lousy at managing time. And, um, yeah, like I didn't do a video this week for ASMR because my intent was to finish some projects I have for my music channel. And I was thinking, okay, it'll be cool because I'm going to be doing the live stream this weekend, so that'll count as sort of a video for this week, right? And, uh, you know, so I don't know. Um, I, I just, but I, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to complete a thing. I mean, I have all these things that are kind of, I'm juggling, you know, things in the air when it comes to the music thing. I need to just uh, finish something, Bill. Just finish something. Oh, okay. Well, I, sorry to hear you're tired, Space Cowboy. Hopefully you can, well, maybe, you know, chill out here with us. You can get some relaxation, and then maybe you can go snooze for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Got to make sure you get your rest, man. Humans need rest. Well, you know, Samuel, actually, I've been very good. Uh, physically, I've been pretty good. I've been um, reinvigorating um, the idea of doing, you know, physical exercise, you know, um, more than just the minimal stuff assigned to me by, you know, physical therapists to help with my spine, but actually try to get just in better physical shape. You know, that's been good. And my mental health has been, you know, pretty good lately. You know, meds are good. You know, I'm getting sleep, you know, being able to maintain a pretty optimistic, you know, getting better at functioning better, right? You know, it's all good. Break the ice on which channel? You mean the WC Postman channel or the music channel? I guess the music channel. I mean, I, I, I don't have much on there. I guess I, can, I do need to do that. Hey, Nate, how you doing? Yeah, it's my hope for the music channel that... Uh, I can um, 
Well, essentially leverage you guys, right? You know what I mean? If I can start putting out some decent material on that, and then I could, you know, convince some of you to go, hey, go check out my music channel. You know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, that's my hope anyway. Uh, we'll see how that will play out, hopefully. Hey, Tobias, how are you doing? No, I don't work in animal science. No, nope. sorry, Undertaker. I, right now, I don't do anything, unless you're, you know, considering me animal, and I'm, you know, trying to do science on myself. Um, now, I used to work, most recently, um, right, currently I don't have a job, um, which, you know, kind of sucks, but, you know, whatever, you know, we do what we can. Um, but I used to work in uh, retail packaging. It was a business-to-business -business thing, mostly. Um, so, like, paper bags, boxes, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But I had to give it up because I couldn't, I, I had to, I had to part, at least half my job was working in the warehouse, moving things to make sure that stuff got where it was supposed to go. I managed the online thing. Um, it, I don't know if it still exists even, because um, we got bought by another company and that kind of thing. But it used to be called Discount Shopping Bags. And I managed that for Aero Paper was the parent company. And, um, but, but I had to go into the warehouse and make sure stuff got where it needed to go, uh, which meant picking up boxes, you know, or, you know, like the, the the heaviest thing was typically uh, dunnage because it that's you know this big it's just paper it's like newsprint um, you know it's like seventy five pounds and I have to move that around was a pain in the ass but I got a place I couldn't carry it around anymore just it was I would end up with bad symptoms in my feet and I thought I was going to not be able to walk anymore kind of thing anyway I don't want to go into all sorts of morose downer things about that but um, anyway so let's get on to these comments. Um, Okay, the name of my music channel is Three Monks in a Tub. Um, if you go to my actual, just uh, the Bill Max Fox Pax channel, um, there, it, there's, uh, you know, it has all the stuff, you know, and it'll have like the latest videos kind of thing. And then underneath that is, uh, it'll be my other channels. And there's two of them, that uh, Three Monks in a Tub. The logo thing is just me holding up my hand like that. And then uh, there's a W for WC Postman, which is just, that's just me being an old man yelling at clouds, basically. You know, I'm talking about all my weird left wing. What is it? Uh, the atheist anarchist advocating agape. That's the phrase I use for myself over there. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I leverage you up right on. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I knew need I need to get uploads on both of them. Frankly, I'll, the, the WC Postman one will probably be the least active. I hope just because. I, the music one is important to me to get underway, and of course this is always going to be important to me because ASMR is important to me. I mean, I mean, I try to make arty versions of it just because that appeals to me. But you know, I love ASMR. It helps me as a human. I enjoy it as an art form. Um, I, you know, I'm a tingly guy. You know what I mean? Um, so I, you know, yeah, yeah got to make. If you love it, you got to make it. Right? At least that's my thinking. Okay, a bad way to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't worry about it, man. I'm, you know, I'm fine with it. Uh, I've had a lot of crazy jobs. I think I've mentioned before that. Uh, let's see. I've been. Uh, I worked at a convenience store for a while, uh, early on in my life. I did uh, construction and labor, or labor in construction, uh, and then I worked for a little while doing um, plumb and line, which is also in construction. Um, you know, making sure that the buildings are plumb and line, right? So it's like you make sure everything's square, basically. Um, and that kind of thing. Um, I worked at a pharmaceutical company, or actually I should say biotech company, because um, we didn't make drugs. We made tests, um, like uh, pregnancy tests and ovulation tests and allergy tests and strep throat tests and this sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I've had a lot of, and I worked at colleges tutoring uh, for a while. I worked at school districts doing all kinds of you know jobs for various school districts. I worked for a uh, a state organization was um, actually I guess it's an NGO um, but it was closely associated with uh, the state of California gathering data at a, a, um, a juvenile hall I only did that at less than a year I did that because I just it, it just got too depressing interviewing kids on the intake about their sex and drug habits and stuff like that it's just ah, you just saw too many kids that were just I mean a, a mother brought in her son and just dropped him off and just said, I can't handle him anymore. You guys take him. It's like, ah, it's heartbreaking stuff like that. I just couldn't do it anymore. Anyway, let's get back to the comments here. I keep ending up on these downer topics. I got to get my head out of that space, man. Anyway, um, 
I'm not going to talk about the Palestine stuff today, Duncan. It's just uh, I'm, I'm going to. It's just I don't want to get into that space today. Um, uh, Undertaker. The music I produce is um, I don't know. Some of it's kind of arty. Some of it's sort of Eno esque. Some of it's kind of Fripp esque. Some of it's just kind of you know I don't know silly nonsense. Um, and have I ever played jazz? Sort of. I took a course in jazz improv at a place called Diablo Valley College. It's in uh, Contra Costa County. Uh, the lady who taught it was Sue Mascarella. Um, she's amazing. Uh, she was on loan to us from Cal Berkeley. Um, and then I kind of dabbled in stuff that was tangential to jazz. So I've never really been in a jazz band. I've played with jazz guys, you know, a couple times in live situations where I was invited to come, you know, just sort of sit in and do a jam. Um, but it was being very loose because I'm way more experienced doing kind of funk blues stuff. Uh, like for a little while in San Diego, I played in a kind of a white boy funk band um, this was back in the 80s. Um, yeah, so there's that about, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I would never call myself a jazz musician, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm just sort of, I, I just play whatever it is I play, you know what I mean? I, mostly influenced by a lot of psychedelic guitar, think, you know, Hendrix and David Gilmore and to a certain extent, Jimmy Page and the like, you know, and of course, Fripp and, you know, kind of art, rock, progressive stuff like that. I'm glad you like the WC Postman stuff, Nine Lives. That's good to know. The dogs are going crazy. Oh, you could hear the dogs on the mic. Did that come through? <laughs> yeah, we have dogs. Let's see, we've got two pit bulls, um, two other dogs that my sister has that are kind of mutts. One's a lab, one's a bull of some kind. And then there's three little dogs. One's a little terrier and then uh, uh, chihuahuas, you know, two little chihuahua terrier type things and that kind of, yeah. Uh, oh, the radio role play thing. You know, I thought about doing that, um, but I, I tried to be clever in the way I did it. So what I was doing is I did the segments that were my segments, and then I pointed them to videos that were, you know, music that I thought would be cool. And I tried to make a, it a playlist, playlist so it would play like a radio show, right? Uh, but that way I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, any of the kind of copyright nonsense because I wasn't really you know, putting it on my channel. I was pointing to another channel. And um, anyway, it, it, the videos became unavailable and links got broken and all kinds of weird stuff. You know, I think I might do something like that again. If I do, I'll probably wait till I have enough material for my music channel and it'll be, I'll bring in my own music and do it that way. But I'll probably have it not be really about the music. I'll have it be more like, you know, one of those late night uh, radio guys that kind of talks and rambles over the music kind of thing. At least that's kind of what I was thinking I might do. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get into the... Uh, Duncan says, by anarchist, do you mean that you believe anarchy is a way of existence or that you believe in disillusion of the current government? Um, okay, that's a complicated thing. I'll try and be brief. By anarchy, I mean dismantling oppressive hierarchies. Um, I think governance is necessary, especially if you have uh, a large population. So there needs to be some form of us being organized and figuring things out. I just believe it can be done without people having to, you know, put the boots on and you know put it to other people's throats, you know. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm, ultimately, I'm for dismantling of capitalism. I realize it's not going to happen within my lifetime, um, but capitalism is an oppressive nightmare. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's my view on it. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, you know, anyway, let's not get too much into that. I don't want to, you know, get too deep into philosophical or political stuff here. Um, just because, yeah, I'd rather stay, you know, kind of positive. And I tend to get amped up when I start talking about politics. And it makes me angry because I get frustrated with things. That, to me, it seems pretty obvious that we should be doing things differently. And, you know, uh, anyway. Um, yeah, I've had some wild jobs, and that's, yeah, I haven't even covered the whole thing, man. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I've had lots of crazy jobs. Um, yeah, the stillness video, I'm proud of that one. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I, sh I should try to work some more of that kind of stuff back into my material again. And that's fine. I like talking about that kind of stuff. And I even am fine talking about with some of my silly um, pseudoscience-y kind of things, you know. Because um, I think it's fun to entertain weird pseudosciencey things in your imagination, just as long as you can keep it separate from, you know, what you're kind of just imagining, and then what you think the real world actually entails. You know what I mean? 
if you, you know, until you can bring it into a way that can be tested or verified scientifically, then it just kind of has to live in the imagination world, right? Anyway, that's fine. Anyways, let's see what else we have to go here. Um, You know, I didn't know it sounded that much different when I did the radio role play. I mean, I wonder if it was because I was trying to mimic, you know, DJs. You know what I mean? Maybe I was, I don't remember. I just don't remember doing that one. I mean, I know that I did it. I just don't, I don't have many member, memories of actually being in the act of doing it. Um, and it could be also because it was, you know, a while back. So maybe <laughs> because I was actually just younger. Um, my favorite funk tune. Oh, man. Oh, you know what? It is right now, just because it's on my imagination, is uh, Erica, De, uh, Erica Badu's uh, Annie Don't Wear No Panties. Um, I, I came across the video for it on YouTube, and I keep going back to it. That's just a, it's a, yeah, just, you know, there's a, a good version of it um, on YouTube from a live performance, and uh, it's really, really good. I mean, it's pretty short. It's a, like a, I think it's less than a four-minute version. It's like three-and-a-half-minute version. Um, but man, it's 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 got a really good groove, and I, you know I, her singing on that particular version is is really really good. Um, otherwise, um, early cameo uh, anything uh, anything George Clinton touches is you know fantastic. Um, I like you know of course early James Brown and the like. Um, yeah, I mean those are the things that just come off the top of my head. Uh, and I you know I I like um, uh, you know from a white boy standpoint I liked uh, a lot of the. Uh, early Red Hot Chili Pepper stuff. I kind of, after a while, I kind of just lost interest in them, but you know, that was probably me more than them. I don't know. Um, all right, cool, man. And Duncan, I'm glad you, you, you can see, you know, that we can have some agreement on a thing like that. That's groovy. Uh, Oh, I don't need ideas, man. I need to, uh, um, Undertaker. It's not, it's not that I'm short on ideas. It's I'm, bad at managing my time and following through. See, I get distracted. I'll come up with a thing and I'll be working on it. And then another idea will pop in. I'll go, oh, but that'll work with this other piece over here. So I've got like six things going right now. And it's like, I need to just settle down and do one until it's done and then come up with an idea for the visuals and then put up the video. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, ah, I just can't seem to get disciplined. You know, it's always been my trouble with the, you know, why I have no musical career just because I've never been able to just nail down and get things done uh, and also I played and I made a lot of bad choices about you know bands to play in and like that but uh, um, oh and the slowest pace of the speaking on that video yeah you know I need to a couple of people have mentioned in the comments recently as far as a you know a constructive criticism it's like because right now I think I speak pretty fast but that's because I'm interacting with you guys in a fairly conversational way um and I think that's suitable. For, I mean, I hope nobody's put off by that because that just seems like the appropriate thing to be doing here in this sort of situation. But I think I'm going to make more effort at being slower and also interspersing soft speaking with whispering. You know what I mean? And kind of and just slow down and maybe do a little bit of a whisper and then do a little bit of a whisper and then get slowed down. You know what I mean? I think that would be a good thing for me to do. Uh, like on the game plays in particular, I think I get way too speedy. Um, I think partially because when I'm playing the games, I tend to have a little bit of green tea and I get a little bit of a caffeine thing going, and then it's like, you know. And, uh, okay, let's see what we have going on here for content here, comments. Da, 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 da. Uh, am I a D'Angelo fan by chance? Um, you know, I don't know that I'm, I won't say I'm a fan, mostly because I'm not all that familiar with them. So, you know, I'll have to, you know, look into that more, frankly. Um, Robert, right on. I'm not sure what the right on's for, but, you know, okay, right on. <laughs> Was I high for any of the videos I made back in the day? Um, hmm, maybe. Um, that very well maybe. I'm trying to think. Not not so high as to, you know, one comes to mind like, oh, yeah, I got really high when I made that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I you know, when I could afford it, I would, you know, use cannabis reasonably regularly. I mean, not my, you know, uh, you know, occasionally I've been a daily guy, but, you know, not for any real long length of time. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, I've thought about um, actually doing 
uh, kind of a getting dug with high kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure whether I should do it as a live thing or whether I should just record it, you know, and just, you know, get high and then just babble on about, you know, how the, you, people think of just odd, silly things, you know, when you're, when you're stoned, you know. Uh, like the, the thing comes to my mind is there's a, a scene out of uh, Animal House, right, when they're talking about, you know, they're, they're just getting stoned and it's all weird as hell. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought about doing something like that. Joshua, hello from Italy. Well, hello back to you, my friend. Uh, Days and Compose says, do I have a favorite popular, particular cuisine? Um, hmm. You know, I don't know that I have a favorite. I like lots of various cuisines. Um, um, yeah, I like Chinese food a lot. There's a lot of nice Chinese foods, uh, restaurants here, especially over in San Francisco. Um, okay, well, here's one I'll put just because it pops into my mind and I quite like dim sum. And uh, what's the name of the place? Um, Yank Sing is over in the San Francisco, um, and it's like really, really good dim sum. I think it might even have a Michelin star for it. You know I mean, it's like that good. It's just crazy good. I haven't been there in a long time. Um, but, uh, and of course, when I lived in San Diego, Mexican food, right? But especially Mexican food from like any of the Bertos, like Albertos, Robertos, Gilbertos. I mean, it's like, you know, essentially, uh, like, basically street food, but, it's, you know, from a, a fast food joint. Uh, and they were op a lot of more open 24 hours. So when I played in bands, that would be, that's where you went after the gig, man. You know, try to, you know, hit, hit a liquor store, convenience store before two if you could manage it. And then, uh, and then, you know, go to one of the Birdos to get food. You know, especially uh, my favorite thing was rolled tacos with guacamole. Guacamole. It was just amazing. Yeah, I love that stuff. Oh my goodness, Nine Lives gives me the thing, the money thing, man. Thank you very much. That is super generous. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, there you go, man. That, that'll, that'll get me a little bit, man. That'll, that'll be plenty fine. Thank you for your generosity. That's absolutely cool. Thank you. And let's see, I got uh, more. Let me see if I can keep up with these comments here. Da, 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 da. Uh, a bit of a cliche question. Uh, this is Joshua. Um, if you could impart a piece of wisdom on your younger self, what would it, what would I tell him? Oh, man. Hmm. I'm going to have to roll that. There's a lot of things, you know, frankly. Um, a lot of it would have to do with just silly decisions I made back then. Like, you know, uh, don't quit that band, play in that band, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and, you know, not take certain jobs, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And is that Kai Hendrick? Hello? Get you peace, man, and let mom sleep. It is going pretty well. Um, you know, thank you. Yep. And okay, let mom sleep. Uh, from Mexico. All right, right on. Whereabouts in Mexico? Anywhere near uh, the California border, or let's see, where have I been? I've been, I've been up and down Baja a little bit, and I went to. Uh, where was it? Acapulco, I think, when I was on a cruise, and then I went to uh, the Yucatan once on a different cruise. Um, but that was cruise touristy stuff, really, you know, so, so yeah. But um, anyway, so Pango Schwartz says, first time I got to be in one of your lives. I'd love to appreciate it. Today. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Glad you're here, man. I'm glad that they can help you with any anxiety, man. That's, uh, you know, that's that's a groovy thing. I appreciate that. It, it gladdens my heart to know that the stuff I make is is that other people get something out of it. That's, you know, that's a big part of the motivation, you know. Uh, Space Cowboy, do I like America? Ah, uh, see, that's a complicated question, man. There are people here that I really like, and there are aspects about America I really like. Oh, you mean the band. <laughs> I was going to start going off on the United States. Um, you know, I like some other stuff. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with it. I, well, of course, you know, Horse With No Name and Sister Golden Hair. And uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff. That's the only two that come to my mind right now. Uh, I like those two tunes. Um, shout out to your friend, Tiran. He's a big fan of your work. All right, cool. Shout out to, uh, is, do I say Tiran? Is that how I would say that? Hey, Tiran, how you doing, man? Aha, there you go. Oh, Mexico City. Oh, man, so I would love to get to Mexico City. I haven't been there. I understand that it's quite the thriving place, you know, just with a lot of people doing lots of stuff. I've had friends that went there, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I, I hear good things. I, I'd like to get to I'd like to go check it out. Have you ever played much chess? No, I'm not. Man, I, 
I'm not really that, that good at chess, and um, I it doesn't intrigue me enough to spend the time to get good at it. You know what I mean? Because it's one of those things that you, if you're going to play it, I think you should actually get good at it. Otherwise, what are you doing? You know, um, I used to play it with a guy who was my neighbor, and I got a little bit better, I guess, just from playing. Right? You know, the more you do a thing, the better you'll get at it. Um, but I mostly played with him because he liked playing it and it, he was my friend, you know what I mean? So it was like, that's really what my motivation was there. But yeah, I've never been much of a chess guy. Um, I played Go with my dad when I was younger. Um, and that's quite a game. That's, you know, for me, that was quite a game. Uh, it's one of those things that's conceptually super simple, but there, it's a that's a very beautiful game. I quite like that. Um, Mommy, Daddy, well, I love you too, man. Glad you're here. Samuel says... Yeah, you know, I haven't spent any time in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I mean, I guess, wow, I guess I've been as far north as Mendocino here in California, um, but not any farther than that. Um, I understand, you know, I see pictures of it and stuff. It's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'd like to get up there. Yeah, of course, great food. Yeah, of course, let me let mom sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm lost on too many things happening. So who has tons of games? Nine lives. I don't know. Uh, okay, Let Mom Sleep. Could you name a few bands listen to while tripping on LSD? Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so I guess I'm going to have to check that thing about uh, casual drug discussion. You know, I guess I've already been talking about weed anyway. So, um, so uh, let's see. Pink Floyd. Um, uh, I would say if you're up to it, Umaguma. Um, but not if you've not listened to it before, because careful with that axe, Eugene, can be really, uh, you know, if, you're, if you don't know what it is and what's coming, it can be quite jarring. Uh, but if you know what it is, it could be quite entertaining. Um, and especially, uh, what is it, uh, several species of small furry animals gathered together in a cave and grooving with a Pict. <laughs> That's a really good thing for, you know, any kind of doing the, the, the tripping sort of situation. Uh, there's a band called African Head Charge. Uh, I quite like a lot. They're kind of a, a, a dub thing. I got into them back in the 80s. Um, oh, it's, I think it's an Andrew Sherwood. Is that the guy? Um, but, yeah, that's a really fantastic thing. Um, Miles Davis's Bitches Brew is another one. That's a really good one. Or Kind of Blue if you're in a mellow mood. Um yeah, I would. Uh, what else would be a good one? Um, now, here's the thing: if uh, depending on where your mind is at, because I I actually played this for some people when I was uh, with some friends of mine who were on LSD, because uh, they were deadheads, and at the time I was more leaning into the punk rock realm of the world, and um, they would put on the Grateful Dead, and then I would put on something. So one of the things I used to put on that I quite liked, but they would always go, "No, take that off, man." Um, is uh, Public Image Limited Second Edition. Um, so if, if you're if you're okay with that kind of aggressively harsh sort of timbres, um, and if you're really adventurous, uh, uh, Captain Beefheart. Oh, okay, Nine Lives, that's the game thing that you were telling me about before, right? Okay, my brain, sorry, I, I had to skip over a few things and my brain is doing whatever it does. Um, oh, cool, Duncan, I'm glad you like Code Breaker. It's a good game, it's good for your brain too. It helps you exercise logical thinking, you know? So, you know it's, it's a, I think it's a good thing. I encourage people to, uh, who are like taking, when I, you know, when, I, when I was younger and I tutored math and logic, uh, especially for logic, I would encourage people to play the game Mastermind with friends just because it's, you know, it, you're doing deductive reasoning, right? You know what I mean? Um, so it's, you know, it's a good thing. And it is relaxing, isn't it? Because it's not fast. You can just chill and do it at your own pace, you know? Uh, LSD or psilocybin? I'm going to say psilocybin. Um, just because something about psilocybin... Um, now, the downside is, is a lot of times it's more money if you want to get to a, a, a really big place. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Uh, uh, what does uh, McKenna call it? The heroic dose or something like that? Um, you know, at least, you know, yeah, at least back in the day. I mean, I haven't done LSD in a really long time, but it used to be you could get it, you know, just for a couple of bucks a hit. You know what I mean? 
Um, whereas uh, with mushrooms, you, know, you had to buy more and you know, deal with it and, and all of that. Um, so I prefer psilocybin, um, mostly because it feels when I'm in the space, I feel more organic in it, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel less blown away and more involved, you know what I mean? Um, at least that, you know, yeah, that's that's my experience of it. But, the, I, you know, I found value in both experiences, frankly. I mean, I quickly got out of the, ooh, it's a party drug. For me, those things aren't party drugs, although I would do it socially with people. Um, but that would be kind of at the beginning of it. And then when things got good, then I'd go, okay, now it's time to, you know, do some, you know, uh, I guess a common word is psychonaut, right? Um, but, yeah, you know, so, especially as I've gotten older, that kind of thing for me is a, a more personal um even when I use weed, most of the time I'm by myself just because it's, you know, I would like to get into a sort of meditative sort of thing and, you know, kind of just groove on concepts and things and, yeah, you know, but that's, you know, um, whatever you decide to do, if you're going to do any of these types of things, make sure that you're in a good place of mind and uh, that you're seeing too caring for yourself, right? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, anyway, let no one sleep says, all right, thanks for naming all those bands. Right on, man. I hope I hope you have uh, you know a good experience with any of that or all of it, you know. And uh, you know if it if it uh, comes up at another time, you know, let me let me know how, how it went for you, you know, either in the comments or you know coming to another live stream or whatever. Let me know how it goes. Um, Tobias says, if you were locked in a room and forced to study one area of math for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably foundations, you know what I mean? Like uh, how, you know, getting into axioms and that, that was the thing that really fascinates me and development of how those work. Um, maybe, yeah, I think probably that. Although hmm, I only took one course in uh, functions of a complex variable and I, it was, I found it challenging. Um, but the complex plane is a crazy place, man. So I don't know. I, eh, hmm. See, that's a tough one. I'd have to roll it around in my head, you know. <laughs> okay, Samuel. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, I, I'm going to, this is, here's the plan. I'm going to do these at whatever weekend is closest to the middle of the month. You know what I mean? That's going to be the plan. And I'm going to do these little batches of three, like one kind of around this time-ish, one around midnight-ish my time, and then one... Uh, in the morning on Sunday morning. Um, yeah, that's the plan anyway. I'll see how that goes. Um, I mean, if there's any, if if, if people really want to have, you know, some kind of different schedule, um, I guess I'll have, maybe I'll do another survey. Because um, I did a survey on the community tab on my channel um, just to kind of gain, you know, what would be good for me schedule-wise as well as what seemed to be what people would, would be appealing to people. Um, anyway, Samuel, I hope uh, if you're still listening, I hope you have a good night and take care of yourself and much love, man. There you go. I think I'm kind of caught up with the comments, aren't I? Or let's see, I can't. Yeah, okay, I guess I'm caught up with the comments. <laughs> What else can I talk about? Right on in. Yeah, I'm wondering how well the, the and this delay thing is weird. It is really, really weird because, you know, I see like, I'm using OBS, right? And so I see what's going on here because I'm watching the levels and stuff to make sure that the audio is, you know, cruising and all that. And then I look over at the YouTube live stream thing here and that where the comments are right there and then there's the picture over there. And it's just weird because it's like several seconds behind and it just trips me out to just like, you know, so <laughs> anyway, so here we go. I got some comments to catch up on. Uh, oh, well, I'm, you know, sorry you're having trouble with numerical solutions, man, but, uh, you know, uh, good luck with that. And uh, yeah, I, 
I'm, I'm too rusty to offer anybody any kind of advice on anything at this point. So, you know, I'll, I'll just say I hope it goes well for you, man. <laughs> Do I watch rocket launches? Um, you know, when I was a kid, I did. Absolutely. I was very young, but I saw, you know, the big one. You know what I mean? The, the man on the moon thing. That was fantastic. I mean, I was young, but it was like even being young, uh, I guess I was like four or something. Um, it was still you could tell it was a big deal. You know what I mean? It was a big deal. And of course, after that, um, when I was in high school, we used to they used to let us. Uh, we could watch it in a. Uh, when I was uh, in a math class and in a science class, we could they would uh, bring in stuff so we could watch the uh, um, the shuttle go up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've watched any recently, man. But uh, I like the idea of rocket launches, man. You know, because uh, yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about uh, the whole space thing. I, I think we should. I think the idea of exploring space is really groovy. Um, but my problem is is the mess that we're putting around our planet. There's just way too much junk up there. And we may screw ourselves, you know what I mean, if we're not careful, because that stuff can get. I mean, I don't know how whether it's, whether the people who are talking about it are being alarmist or not, but uh, there's this whole idea that uh, that stuff's going to keep breaking up, and you're going to end up with you know stuff that will just ruin things basically, and maybe trap us on the planet. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm you know may, again, like I said, maybe it's alarmist, but. Building a desk, yeah, you know, well, you know. Uh, live gameplay, you know, maybe, you know. I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think about that, maybe so. I don't know why it seems like a weird thing to me, but, you know, maybe so, I'll have to think about it. Because, uh, you know, when I'm doing the live thing, here's the thing, I'm so, I like being able to interact with you guys and, you know, do the comments and stuff. Um, so I don't know if I'd be able to ride a good balance or not, you know what I mean? I'll have to think about it though. So I, I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes either. Nine lives. So you know, I'll, I will. I will take it under advisement and actually seriously consider it. That's the best I can do for you right now. <laughs> uh, no, the beard is easy as hell, man. Uh, Daisy and confused. It's you know. Um, well, here's the thing. Um, for a while, I used to be very into like you know trimming off the uh, split ends and the like um, and mostly I just I you know I wash it and I put conditioner in it so that you know it'll stay reasonably you know okay and not get too tangled up and all of that but you know that's about it I don't you know I, I just you know, I just you know I suppose I should you know, I'd look more you know becoming if I kind of gotten some of these wispies trimmed off and I I need to trim my mustache again I need to do that just because it like you know I've I don't know if you've noticed or not, I keep getting it in my tea and it keeps kind of dripping. It's kind of an annoying thing. And, and if I'm not, you know, when, I, when it gets this long, it can get into food and it's like, I have to, you know, when I'm eating, it's like, ah, ah, going like that all the time. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's it. Otherwise, I just, you know, it's kind of just a thing, right? It's like having a finger or whatever. Right? It's just part of my body at this point. You know, I mean, I've had it for so long. Let's see. I'm, let's see, uh, I'm 58. Um, so my sister will turn 55 this November uh, and I started it on uh, I stopped shaving on her 40th birthday so it will be 15 years old come this November so yeah <laughs> yeah crazy huh you know it's really kind of crazy uh, in one regard because when I was a younger human um, I my appearance changed quite a bit, right? You know, so like in the late seventies into the early eighties, I kept my hair very long, much you know, kind of the way I do now, right? Um, although I was, you know, didn't have this balding nonsense going on, which you know, this is aggravating. I wish it would just either fall out or whatever, just because, you know, yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, and then after that, I kind of got into this kind of punkish sort of style of hairdo and. Um, in all sorts of various forms of spikiness and the like. And then even for a while, I wore a mohawk. Uh, and then I shaved my head for a while completely, like with, you know, safety razors, like completely smooth shaved. Um, yeah, you know, so I've had a lot of different hairdos. But then, you know, after I grew this beard, I was kind of like, all right, there we go. I'm done. <laughs> you 
yeah, okay, I guess there's more people that think that, that the live game stream, live gameplay might be okay. Uh, all right, so I'll, I'll think about it. Then, then it just comes down to, because I'm not going to want to do that in multiples, you know what I mean, like I'm doing with this. So I'd have to just pick, you know, a time. Or, I don't know, maybe I'd rotate it. I don't know. I, I have to think about it. So, um... <laughs> My beard is older than you, Space Cowboy. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Well, you know, I mean, do you have your mom's permission to be here? Because, you know, I do use coarse language and I'm talking about drugs and the like. You know, I don't know if I want to, just want to be a bad influence on you. Um, so, you know, there you go. There's my, my, my effort at being a responsible adult. Um, yeah, exactly. I haven't changed since before the global financial crisis. You know, and I, yeah, I used to, it's actually back then, I used to get a fair amount of grief from people who would, you know, call me names because that was, you know, during the era of Osama bin Laden, right? And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was, uh, anyway, let's not go down that road. I don't want to keep coming up with these negative, enough with the negative vibes, Moriarty. Um, do I like electronic music? Yeah, of course. I, I love electronic music. Um, I don't know how, I, I probably always mispronounce his name, but uh, Jean-Michel Jarre, um, the guy that does uh, Oxygen and Equinox, and um, oh, I was listening to one of his newer things just recently on Spotify. Um, I can't think of the name of it. No, yeah, so, um, and also, um, oh, what are they called? Uh, the Moog Cookbook. Um, they, they do a lot of, uh, they do, like, in interesting covers, you, you know, using, you know, Moog, you know, the analog, you know, synth kind of thing going on. And, uh, and of course, I'm a, um, Wendy Carlos, right? Um, you know, switched on Bach, and also the, how I got introduced to her was the soundtrack for A Clockwork Orange. Um, I mean, that's all early stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, I do like that stuff. And of course, you know, obviously stuff like Throbbing Gristle dabbles into all that kind of thing as well. And I'm, you know, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I love all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, anyway, so let's see what, what we're doing here. Okay, I'm glad Space Cowboy. I mean, I'd hate to chase you off, but you know. Um, Crane Fly Game Time, speaking of drugs and bad influences. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Duncan says, just curious as an atheist, a big music fan, are you ever turned off by Christian themes and music? And John Denver. Um, you know, I, I, no, I don't get turned off by that in music as long as they're not coming down heavy handed on me about it. Look, if somebody's sharing, look, I've had a lot of friends who are Christian and I, my objection with them has never been about their Christianity. I mean, I'm an atheist, but I'm not here to be anti-theistic at all. It's my worldview, you know what I mean? It's how I see the world. Um, but my problem with religions are when they have to do with power structures that are coming down on people, you know what I mean? If your religion is telling you to harm me because I'm not a member of it, then man, I don't want anything to do with you, you know? Um, but anyway, so back to the, the point and, and whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful music because people like that, what they're doing is they're sharing a thing that they find beauty in, and that's fine with me. That's absolutely fine with me, so I'm okay with that. Uh, it's the same with, uh, um, you know, like I like a lot of reggae, right? And, you know, a lot of reggae is straight up religious music, right? They're talking about Ja, you know, um, you know, uh, and that's fine, you know. Um, and again, I can see that they're talking about something that is it's their conveyance of something beautiful. And they're using music to talk about something that's powerful and beautiful to them. And that's that's what art's for, man. That's absolutely what art is for. So, yeah, I mean, I, that's fine. I, so, no, I have no problems with that, man. That's all groovy. Have any of the OG ASM artists reached out? Um, in what regard? I mean, I used to interact with Paul a lot, uh, Ephemeral Rift. I mean, well, obviously we did the, you know, the collaboration and we had dabbled with the idea of doing another one and I ended up just being a flake and I think he just got tired of dealing with me. Um, you know, which, yeah, it's my fault. So, you know, I, I have to live with it. Um, Wendy, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay, right on. Yeah, she's she's brilliant, man. She's I mean, she to my mind, she's kinda in a similar to what Hendrix was for guitar, she was for synth, you know what I mean? Just because of when she was doing it and what was, you know, kind of what needed to be done, right? To give it some life and really, you know, go, ooh, here's things, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. What are my thoughts on the KSI versus Tommy Fury fight? I don't know anything about it, so I don't have any thoughts on it. 
Sorry. Eh. I'm woefully ignorant when it comes to um, martial arts of any kind. Um, I have watched it. I've had friends that were very into it, and I, you know, uh, one time we, you know, when I had a roommate, and we got a paid preview, which I chipped in for just because it was going to be a, an event. Um, man, I can't remember which fight it was. This would have been holy mackerel, right around 1990, I think, somewhere in that. In that, was, I think it was probably a Tyson fight. Um, hmm, trying to remember. Anyway, yeah, Femoral Riff's a great guy, Duncan. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, since I've made the return. Um, yeah, no, not really. I don't really expect them to, you know? I mean, man, things are, because, excuse me. <clears throat> when I first started and came onto the scene, it was more of a scene back then, like you might associate with, you know, kind of a similar dynamic to a music scene. You know, like if you'd have gone to, you know, like, say, London in the 60s, kind of that kind of scene. I mean, maybe not that vibrant or whatever, but th that kind of people interacting with each other and being very excited about the whole... I mean, because it was before ASMR was called ASMR, right, you know? And um, people made response videos to each other, and people sort of really shouted each other out as far as like, hey, you should check out this guy. Um, you know, I got a shout-out early on from Ephemeral Rift, actually. I can't remember the name of the video. He kind of, kind of folded me in to uh, a role-play. Uh, it was really kind of cool and clever the way he did it. It was really, really groovy. And of course, I got you know, a, you know, what, probably my biggest shout out was from Maria. Um, you know, so I will forever be grateful to her for that. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't. I, I feel like it's gotten a. It's gotten big, right? So there's that aspect of it. And b. There's because of the way YouTube functions now. There's a lot. There's a lot of people who seem to be doing ASMR because they think they can grow an audience and get you know ad revenue. And that's not bad. I mean, people need to do what they need to do. Um, but I miss the old days, I guess is what it is. I'm just being a nostalgic old fart. Um, but no, uh, I guess to, you know, back to the, the question at hand is no, nobody's, nobody's reached out. I thought about trying to reach out to other people and saying, hey, remember me? I'd like to, you know, whatever. Not necessarily have to do, you know, collaborations or anything like that, but just, you know, say, hey, you know, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, do I, uh, Drunken says, do I have any favorite soundtrack? Um, okay. Outside, well, I do like, well, you mentioned earlier, uh, Wendy's uh, um, uh, A Clockwork Orange, which is fantastic. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Especially her treatment of Beethoven stuff is just brilliant. I mean, she's a genius. Anyway, um, and also uh, uh, Marconi's um, uh, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. That's a tremendous soundtrack. Um, man, that's just... Phew. That's powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I mean, that, I love that movie, too. Everything about that movie to me is just really, really good. Um, oh, and also, this is kind of a silly one, but I really am, uh, it was a record my dad had when I was a kid. Man, I don't have it, any copy of it anywhere now. But um, Isaac Hayes' Shaft. I mean, the movie's kind of, you know, whatever. You like the movie, not like the movie. Um, I mean, I found it entertaining. I know a lot of people find it, you know, well, whatever, let's not go into all that. Um, but the soundtrack is fantastic. The soundtrack is absolutely fantastic. So there you go. There's a couple right there. Um, and also, what's the... Uh, the Valley Obscured by Clouds is a weird kind of obscure movie. At least here in the U.S. it's obscure. I assume it's pretty obscure everywhere. Um, but uh, Pink Floyd did the soundtrack for that. That was pretty interesting. Um, uh, I miss the old feather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heather Feather was, man, crazy. Yeah, I mean, man, you know, the other one that I miss, who hasn't been on for since forever, is Whisper Crystal. Um, I used to really, really like her stuff. I guess she's, it's all still up there, I guess. But, um, yeah, you know, the, yeah, anyway, yeah. No, I do not know who Getaway SMR is. Gibby, um... I, should I look into them, I guess? And, yeah, I do like David Lynch's work. Um, I saw... I think it was when I was... Yeah, it was when I was in uh, England back in 85. Um, it was this place, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was this sort of arty place where they did installations and the like in London. And um, 
they had a room where they showed uh, some movies and it was uh, some early I can't even tell you what the names of them were but it was really early stuff of, of David Lynch's um, yeah yeah I, I do like his stuff um, gentlemen ASMR I've been subbed a long time Bill I've fallen asleep to your back I'm in bed many times well I'm glad that you know well I hope that it, that sleep was the aim right you know <laughs> You know, I'd hate to think that you fell asleep when you were actually trying to pay attention and I just bored you senseless, you know, when you weren't looking for it. But uh, I imagine that, you know, everybody's, you know, pretty okay with people falling asleep when it's an ASMR video, right? That's kind of at least in some part, you know. Oh, now here's the thing. I'm curious how you guys are going to react to this. Um, but apparently there's a change in um, a thing that's going on for... Uh, content creators at least well I got a notification for it anyway so at least it's affecting me in that because um, I tend to not want to have ads play on the end roll you know what I mean like I'm fine with ads being in the beginning of the video and that's fine and I don't care what they want to do and if they want to have the ads over off to the side I'm fine with that that's you know whatever um, but I don't want ads and I didn't even mind the overlay ads you know um, uh, but I didn't want ads in the middle Right, because it's ASMR. You don't want to interrupt somebody's. You know, if they're just sitting there trying to get some tingle on. You don't want to have somebody come on and tell them about you know the latest Chevrolet. It's like, are you kidding me? Um, and also at the the end, I guess. But I'm not going to have a choice anymore. It looks like uh, you're going to have the pre rolls, like you know always, and but now you're going to be forced into end rolls. And they say, oh, it's you know to improve opportunities to you know to you know for making money or whatever. And it's like, ah, yeah, that's true, but. You know, I, I, I don't know. I think you, you should, I don't know. I don't know. So, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Because I, I don't know how it will impact you. I'm just fearful that you're going to be all chilled out and nice, and then the video is going to end, and then bingo, there's going to be this horrible ad. Oh, because they're also like, apparently making it so that people can't choose to use ad blocker either, which is, uh, it's like, all right, well, whatever. I mean, I guess it's their platform. They can do what they want, but it eh, makes it kind of troublesome for ASM artists, I guess, yeah. Anyway, there's me uh, being too much of the you know the grumpy old man yelling at the clouds again. Yeah, Pengo, I know what you mean. That's the thing, and you know, well, for a long time, I was never going to have ads on my videos at all. Even when I was thinking about becoming more serious about it, I was thinking I was just going to start making more videos and I would just try to figure out a way of doing, you know, like the tip cup kind of thing or whatever um, and, you know, not even worry about ad revenue at all. Um, but then I got a notification from YouTube that whether I did ad revenue or not, that they were going to, you know, because they were changing the, you know, the, the rules of the platform, that they would now have the right, you know, to... Uh, you know, to, to put ads in, on my videos, you know, whether I was involved or not, you know. Um, and the only way to have any kind of say-so was to actually enter into the, you know, the relationship with them where you have an AdSense account and all of that. Um, and, uh, you know, so I was like, all right, well, if, if you're going to make money off of my, uh, I call this art, you know, I mean, I don't know how seriously you guys want to consider that or not, but I think ASMR is a form of art. Um, and it, the idea that they'd be making a bunch of money off of my art and I wouldn't get any, it just drove me nuts. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, anyway, so, uh, I'm, so I'm curious to how you guys are going to react to all of those types of changes. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't drive you guys away, you know. Um, I know we'll have to figure something out, I suppose. Um, uh, Hackneyed, I'm not going to talk about uh, Gaza and Israel. I'm just, you know, I'm not going to do that today just because I don't want to get into a negative thing. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but that's, yeah, that's editorially, I'm just not going to get into it today. You know, and I probably won't ever mention anything about it on this channel. I want to keep this channel more relaxed and chill and inclusive and all that kind of thing, you know. Um, so I might mention it. I don't know. I probably won't mention it even on the WC Postman channel. Anyway, so I'll just, yeah. So I'm not going to talk about it today. Sorry. Um, Daisy says I feel like that's bogus a creator should be able to decide where to have their ads yeah you know I agree that's the thing you know I'm okay look they give us the platform I get that and they want to be able to make money right but the, here's another thing alphabet is not hurting for money you know what I mean they're just not um, but okay whatever it is their it's their computers right it's all their stuff um, so you know um, 
yeah, I guess I guess they get to do what they get to do. Um, I just wish that they would take some things into account for certain, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, but well, whatever, they're going to do what they're going to do. Um, H Dub says, I guess I'll start listening to ASMR on other platforms like Spotify. You know, I think because I haven't even explored doing that, you know, um, but well, because yeah, Spotify still has ads unless you, you know, buy the uh, the premium or whatever they call it. Um, I just use the free version because, you know, I really don't mind ads if it's just, you know, like listening to the radio kind of idea for me. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like ASMR stuff, it's like it, it becomes intrusive, doesn't it? Um, And let's see, excuse me. <clears throat> so Will Heaver says, uh, not a fan of sponsorship deals in the middle of ASMR videos either. Yeah, you know, I don't want to tell people not to do it again because, you know, it's it's not on me to tell other people what to do, right? But I agree with you. I don't I don't care for it. It's like uh, I have a guy that I've kind of been talking to and he's going to help me um, get better at, you know, doing the YouTube thing, you know what I mean? So I can, you know, get, you know, I guess more ad revenue, you know, if nothing else. Um, and um, when we were having the conversation, I said something about, you know, uh, having ads drove me nuts or whatever. And he was kind of taken aback for a second. I thought, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm misspeaking, I guess, because it's not ads. You know, it's, it's, it's the interruption of the ads and it's sponsorship deals. I don't. Yeah, I just don't. Ah, it's just. Yeah, it's so. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't. I don't vibe well with it, I guess, is really what it comes down to, man. You know, um, so. But for as long as they'll let me not have the ads in the video, I'm going to do that. And so you're going to end up with just videos on the beginning and the end. Unless, of course, you can figure out a way of, you know, getting past their, you know, not having ad blocker. Um, you know, and I'm not going to be butthurt if somebody does ad blocker, you know, because it means I'd lose out on ad revenue. But you, you need to do what you need to do, man, you know. So I'm not going to get butthurt about any of that kind of thing. And... I'm probably going to mess this up. Is that Saya Diakite? And what's up? Back at you, yeah. It's, you know, live stream is up, man. <laughs> Can I do some mic scratching? Yeah, okay, hang on. Let's do, 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 do. You know, maybe get, maybe get something because I'll try it with my finger. I don't think that'll sound good, though. How was that? Is that horrible? I don't know. It seems like maybe that was horrible. Let me find a something that I might actually do it with that might work well. Do I have anything that's like a brush sort of idea? Hmm, 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 hmm. You know, bear with me one second. I'm going to go over here. I have a beat up old retired toothbrush that you know I use for you know well scrubbing and things and you know when you want to get in between things and whatever right you know what I mean it's sort of like it's a little it's a useful brush right so let's start with this first how's that and now see if I can actually lightly scrape the actual screen on the mic how's that is that is that reasonable <laughs> Oh, so the fingers did work. Okay. Use my beard. All right, let me let me do this one thing once more with the toothbrush here. How's the toothbrush on the on the on the mic screen? All right, and then we'll try the beard thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 Doesn't seem like the beard thing is there. So the finger sounds better, huh? All right, let's give it a go here. It's hard for me to tell because I have I'm not monitoring. I'm just looking at meters. You know what I mean? Because I find if I you know put on the headphones, it distracts me too much. That getting too loud it seems like it looks like it uh, peeked out into the red a little bit doesn't look like it clipped but it was getting into the danger zone there 
I, I feel like I missed a few comments here. So let me see. I have a great human being. Well, I'm, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I'm sure there's people who would not agree with you, but I appreciate that, that, that you do think so. Turd Unicorn says everything sounds good. Good, good, good. Okay. Dazed and I keep wanting to say dazed and confused, but I think you're aware of that, right? So dazed and composed. How did I discover ASMR? Was there a certain scene in television or song or some such media that triggered you? Um, yeah, okay, so um, a lot of things. So um, let's see. Uh, I mean, I've always had ASMR. You know what I mean? It, my earliest memories, I, you know, I've always had ASMR. Uh, like, for example, I have a really early a ASMR memory that was really, really intense. was um, during nap, nap time when I was in kindergarten. And for some reason, something was weird about this one particular day, and there was too many kids in the classroom for some reason. And so uh, a few of us didn't get to lay down on the mats to have naps. We had to go sit at the table and put our heads down at the table. And the kid sitting next to me started doing this thing where he was like kind of tracing my fingers and doing some weird, you know, like things and just kind of going doo -doo -doo, and just making weird noises. And, um, and it was just kind of a weird thing. But man, that was a, I really got a big ASMR thing for at least for a few minutes. And the teacher and was like, yeah, you guys are supposed to be quiet. And I was like, but we were being quiet. But yeah, you know, um, but uh, yeah, lots of weird little uh, instances of uh, somebody speaking softly in a movie, and sometimes it'll, it'll trigger my ASMR. Um, for me, the most reliable trigger is a human voice. Um, but sometimes, you know, like I said, touch things, and sometimes um, sound things will work. Um, oh, uh, there's a weird scene. I think it's the movie Freebie and the Bean, and there's this guy and he's got this something and he's doing this thing with his teeth, and it makes this little clicking noise, and that was like it really set me off. That was like crazy, um, and uh, well, and also this is one that it just amuses the hell out of me just because of what it is. There's a song by the band Throbbing Gristle called Hamburger Lady, which is, if you pay attention to the lyrics, it's pretty horrific. That's the point of it, but something about it totally triggers my ASMR. And it's just this weird thing because it's like I'm getting this really cool, tingly, groovy sensation, and the song is actually about a, a horrific accident, and it's just uh, it's just a weird, weird thing. But you know, uh, the brain is what the brain is, isn't it? Um, you feel uh, am is that Mila? Uh, you feel like I'm a military guy? Uh, nope, I've never served. Um, and uh, yeah, no, um, I, you know, my grandfather, both my grandfathers served. Uh, my dad did ROTC when uh, he was in high school. Um, actually, he would have gone to Vietnam except for he knocked my mom up. I don't think that was the plan to get out of Vietnam by knocking my mom up. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, I'm not anti-military in the sense that I'm not against people who serve. I'm against what political structures do when they send militaries to do horrible things. Um, I mean, I realize that and there are, well, there are people like Putin in the world, right? So, you know, it, that it necessitates that you have militaries until we can figure out how to, you know, not have that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm more critical of power structures than I am, you know, people that do things. Uh, my brother-in-law was, uh, he served, um, you know, I've had a lot of friends that have served. Um, but no, I've, I've never served. <laughs> do finger tracing and hand movements. What do you mean? You mean like doing this kind of thing? I'm not good at that stuff, man. You know, I don't know. I feel awkward doing that, frankly. You know, I'm not even sure this is what you're after. But, you know, uh, I don't know. Let's see, Duncan Sweeney. Uh, my earliest ace of my memory is a substitute teacher explaining something quietly over my shoulder. Uh, <laughs> chasing that high ever since, right? So it's like a, it's like the crack experience, right? You know what I mean? Crazy. Uh, Turd Unicorn says, "What do I do for work?" Uh, at the moment, nothing. Uh, it's a, I, you know, yeah, it's it's a long convoluted story, but uh, suffice it to say that the biggest impediment for me working right now is physical issues. Um, so I'm trying to work through that, but. Uh, uh, 
Okay, here we go. Dazed and composed is not quite ASMR, but another sensory phenomenon I might take an interest to is fragrances, perfumes, colognes. You know, yeah, I agree with you on that, except for my olfactory sense is like really diminished since from when I was younger. And it's a very frustrating thing. Um, but yeah, for me, the, the whole olfactory thing is especially uh, when it does work, it's really good for memory triggering. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, in my opinion, name the worst dictators alive today. Uh, I, you know, uh, you know, off the top of my head, I'm just going to name Putin just because that's the obvious thing. I don't want to get into thinking about all the various right wing. You know, I'm not right wing. I'm not into nationalism. I don't, you know, I don't think any of that really serves humankind. I would rather us, you know, think differently about how we solve problems. But, um, you know, yeah, that's me. Um, uh, Gary Parker, the mastermind game is called Code Breaker. What's my favorite trigger, Turd Unicorn asks. Uh, the human voice, particularly female human voice. Um, there are some male voices that, uh, um, yeah, that do, uh, like I like the French whisper at times. Of course, uh, Paul uh, Epperman Ripped, I like him sometimes. Um, what's that guy? I think his channel is Let's Find Out. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I like his voice sometimes. Um, but male voices uh, are more hit and miss and more miss than hit. Um, but female voices is, is, uh, is my most reliable trigger. Um, sometimes tapping things, tapping things with uh, a female voice is really good. And of course, sometimes just odd special effects things, like when people sometimes play around with like putting a little bit of reverb on things, you know, and there'll be little clicky noises that will trigger the reverb and it's kind of, you get that kind of thing going on. That, that kind of works for me sometimes too. And Lenoil, is that right? Uh, well, I hope you get some good sleep, man. And um, yeah, I should do another stillness type video. I have to, I have to go back and revisit some of that stuff, uh, and see if I can figure out a way of channeling that kind of energy, and you know, getting some more art in that direction. And uh, yeah, well, hello, Anderson. I'm glad you've been a long time listener. Welcome to the live stream. And Saya says, my early memory of. At school, everybody stayed silent when we were eating dinner in the cafeteria. For no reason, everybody was silent. So rare, you know. Isn't stuff like that's cool, isn't it? You know what I mean? When people just sort of kind of do a thing together in a weird way, you know, without anybody telling them they have to do it. You know what I mean? It's just kind of a. Hmm. I mean, I, from the way you're describing it, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. But yeah. Trans rights? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Trans rights. My name is Bill, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. All the humans deserve all the rights. You know what I'm saying? It kind of embarrasses me that we need to have any kind of discussions around anybody needing to get their rights. You know what I mean? It's like, wait a minute, they're human. Humans get the rights, right? I mean, that's my point of view. Uh, but if people have to, if they have to clamor for them and say, hey, please don't treat me like crap, I deserve the rights, then we need to, you know, give them the rights. Yeah, you know? Anyway, that's my point of view. So, um, yeah, there you go. And it seems like trans people are right now kind of the, the favorite punching bag of a particular, you know, group of, you know, political group. But, you know, anyway, let's leave that alone. Um, SDU says French Whisper, ASMR chess, gas lamp, ASMR, and you are the only male voice. Well, okay, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm among a, a, of, of a group like that for you. That's, mm -hmm. that's cool. Thank you. Gary Parker says, oh, okay, thank you. It looks electronic, keep me thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think, yeah, I hope that, uh, Gary, I hope that uh, having that kind of focus will help you out, man. It seems to me that it has worked, you know, with people with the ADHD thing, mm -hmm. that, that kind of focus, right, you know? Mm -hmm. At least I hope, you know, what do I know? I'm, you know, I'm just an idiot who babbles. <laughs> but I hope it does you well, man. That's That's the thing. Creepy early ASMR experiences. Um, you know, I can't think of anything in particular right now. I'll have to let that roll around in my head. Um, I, and cause I know just, you know, kind of in a vague sense that I've had ASMR 
and it's been triggered at like inappropriate times, you know what I mean? Um, where I've kind of wanted to go, ooh, you know what I mean? But it's like, uh, like well, like in a classroom, for example, right? When you're like supposed to be responding, you know, to somebody, and then somebody else over there did a thing that triggered your ASMR, and the teacher's expecting you to, you know, be paying attention, and I'm just like, uh, you know, it's like, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't know if that counts as creepy, does it? That's just uh, inappropriate, I suppose. I'll have to think about that. Uh, foreign language ASMR. Yeah, you know, not understanding sometimes is kind of cool, isn't it? Because then you can just get into the rhythm of the voice and the timbre, and it's like, yeah, it's just what it is, yeah. Adequate ASMR, Duncan's talking about. Uh, okay, Duncan suggests adequate ASMR. So, yeah, I'm all for that, We're giving people shout outs. And, uh, you know, somebody else, uh, Am, I'm just going to call you Am, is that okay? Uh, has already asked about ghetto ASMR. Um, and I don't know anything about ghetto ASMR, so I don't know what the drama is about. Um, is it something I should look into? Is it, I mean, I'm not that interested in getting in, in you know, looking up lurid drama, um, but if it's something that affects the scene or you know, something like that, or I'd be curious about it. Um, and is, are, is ghetto ASMR a good ASMRist? I mean, is, is it somebody that we should be, you know, recommending to each other? Um, Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry that it was creepy for you, uh, Saya. That's, uh, e. Kelly says, hi from Tucson, Arizona. I hope you're doing well tonight. Yeah, I'm doing very well tonight. Thank you for asking. And I hope the same for you. Family. Um, okay. I am divorced. Uh, we never had kids. Um, my, uh, other basic family unit is my father. My mom passed away a few years ago. Uh, and my sister. She has three kids of her own and then two stepchildren. And she's uh, married to her second husband. That's the guy I was mentioning earlier, my brother-in-law, who's a former Marine. Um, and uh, yeah, there's that. And then of course, there's uh, some extended family. There's a guy, Jarrell, that lives in the house who's not biologically related to anybody, but he's, you know, our family. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it for the moment. I mean, all the people that live in the house anyway, but, you know. Um, and most of my extended family, I have some cousins, but we don't, we interact occasionally on Facebook, but that's about it. You know, it's kind of a sad thing, but that's what happens, I guess. And I have some other extended family I don't get along with very well um, because of, you know, political, religious reasons. Um, but, yeah, so Duncan's going to hit the, well, good night, man. I'm glad that you came by and, uh, you know, uh, you know, Come around next time, man. I'll be doing it uh, again in a month. Or, you know, maybe, you know, tomorrow. I mean, I'm going to be doing it tomorrow in the morning, too. Um, later tonight at midnight. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Say it says, is it the guy that raged live upon some of his viewers? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Has, can anybody else fill us in on uh, what's up with the ghetto ASMR? Or should we just, you know, is that something that's, you know, we should just leave alone. I don't know. Um, Gary says his first day of some experience was as a daycare and a teacher traced his hand on paper. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Like when you do the uh, tracing your hand like that and then you make like a turkey out of it or some such thing like that. Yeah, I could see how that would work. It never actually happened to me in that regard. But yeah, I could see how that would be a good a good trigger. Was it kind of an awkward thing? I mean, did you like, oh, that's weird? Or did you just kind of go, oh, cool? I mean, I don't know. That would be weird. I mean, because I see, I don't, I don't have a memory of not having ASMR. You know what I mean? So I don't, I mean, I didn't think anybody else had it, frankly, you know, until I found this scene here on, on YouTube. Um, I, you know, I just thought it was, you know, another peculiar thing about me being kind of unique and, you know, eccentric and weird, I guess. But yeah. Turd unicorns, <laughs> my favorite one is the count. Yeah, you know, I should maybe do some more simple ones like that where I just do word lists or counting or, or the like, because that seems, I mean, it's simple to do, I mean, conceptually. And um, I enjoy those from other people, you know what I mean? That's, um, you know, so yeah, maybe I should think about, you know, doing some more of those too. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was rough. I mean, uh, uh, um, 
Ben Jay's talked about uh, expressing uh, you know commiseration about you know my my loss with my mom, um, and uh, yeah, but the the thing about it was she she had health issues that were such that we knew kind of what was coming. I mean, we didn't know exactly when, obviously, um, but you know. I mean, it was frustrating for her because her health was, it was what it was. Um, but in a way, as cruel as that may be, it kind of made it easier for the rest of us, you know what I mean? Because we knew kind of what was coming. Um, so was, yeah, I had mixed feelings about that. But, um, you know, at least we got to be around her though. I mean, she was in the hospital, but you know, the family was, you know, at hand. So, you know, that was, that was a good thing. Um, I see. So Anne says, what would I do if someone disrespected you at work alongside with the manager ever cursed on you? Would you quit your job? Um, yeah, I would. Absolutely, I would. Um, you know, I never had, had I never had anything that was that confrontational, um, but I quit a job on two occasions. Um, one was when I worked for a convenience store. And um, it was because it was becoming ridiculous. Somebody was stealing from the store and um, they kept firing people and hiring new people thinking that they had figured out who was stealing from the store and it never worked out. Um, and it got to the place where I, I came in one day and um, I was doing my gig, you know, just you know, doing the, the shift. And then the, the manager relieved me in the morning. I did graveyard. Um, and he came in in the morning and was like, okay, you need to come back tonight. And I go, no, no, today's my day off, man. And he's like, no, 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 because it was just me and him then. He had canned everybody else. It was just me and him. And we were going to have to do 12-hour uh, shifts until they could get a new crew hired. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. Um, and he goes, well, blah, blah, you're not going, I'm going to quit. That's what I'm going to do. And he goes, well, then we'll have to close the store. Cause we, I was like, well, I don't care what you have to do, man. I'm not, I'm not working under those conditions. So I left. Um, and the other job I left was uh, the uh, biotech place. And it really came down to, I discovered that I was mostly doing my boss's job, you know, and, uh, and then I was gonna not get a raise. Here, dig this, right? So um, you had sick days, you had, you know, you, you earned your sick days, right? And so you, uh, so you could have, um, what was it you earned? It, so you could have a week's worth of sick days um, per year, right? So you earn some fraction, you know, of a sick day per month kind of a thing. And um, so they were going to not give me a raise um, because I'd taken too many sick days. And I was like, what are you talking about? And so what it was is they counted my frequency of me taking sick days from the first time I took, took a sick day. And then I had taken um, four of my five sick days so I guess it was only five sick days because it was a work week, right? It wasn't seven days. Um, and uh, so I still had days on, but I'd done them like too rapidly or some such thing. Or I don't remember how it worked out, but I was like, I still have sick days on the books. So how can I have taken too many sick days? You know what I mean? And it was just this whole weird runaround, stupid crap, basically just not giving me my raise that, you know, what I was due. And, and then I found out on top of that, that I was really doing a lot of my boss's job. I mean, literally he was just taking work I did and then just turning it and giving it to somebody else and saying, oh, this is the stuff. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, and I was like, I, I just, I quit. And uh, actually it was on April 1st <laughs> and I thought it was funny. And then they thought I was joking and they called me back. They insisted I had to come in for an exit interview. And I said, no, I don't, I don't work for you anymore. Send my last check, here's my address, you know? Screw you, I'm not working for you anymore. So you should take care of yourself, man. If you feel like somebody's been not treating you well at a workplace, if you have the capacity to quit, like it's not gonna, you I mean, if you, you know, if you, if you have enough money so you can like, you know, make your rent that month or whatever the hell, um, make sure you take care of yourself. But man, you, if, you, if, it's, if somebody's disrespecting you, man, then you need, to, you need to not work there. You need to find your way out, you know? That's, that, you know, there's my advice. Maybe I'm too harsh on that regard, but you know, people, people, if you're doing a job for somebody, you should be respected for doing the job, you know, period. Anyway. Okay, anyway, so let's get back onto here. Uh, da, 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 da. So Gary says it was both. Da, 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 da. Okay, that's cool. All right. I'm glad it's fun for you, Saya. Yeah? 
Oh, I guess that's for uh, Gary for the um, the uh, the daycare thing, right? So I don't know. Gary, you'll have to answer, say his question, was it a man or a woman? Hey, there's my dad, G. Poshman. How you doing, dude? <laughs> it's going okay. Yeah, 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 some bosses just suck, don't they? So Binjay says he's been laid off. Yeah, any time a change like that can be can be challenging. But I hope you can. Uh, well, I hope you navigate it well. You know. I'm gonna have a little bit more tea. Let's see what time is it getting to be? Seven thirty. I wonder how much longer I should go because I'm gonna want to take a little bit of a rest before I do the midnight one. Um, yeah, I'll go for a while more. I don't know. We'll see how long. You know, I just realized drinking this tea, I'm probably going to have to uh, stop for a bathroom break at some point. But I'll just, you know, mute the mic and be away from the screen for a few minutes. But we will deal with that eventuality when it comes up. <coughs> So am I all caught up on the comments now? It looks like so, okay. I don't even know how many people are here now. 23, all right. I don't know what's a good number for these things, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Did I tell them that there are nine people in the house and seven dogs? Are we at nine people now? Da, 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 da. That's five. Yeah. Yep, I guess it is nine people, huh? Yeah, nine people and seven dogs. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've mentioned that before. I don't know if I I, I did mention that we had the dogs because the dogs barked earlier and they, it got in through the mic so people could hear it. They, I guess the dogs were. I don't even notice it anymore, frankly. Um, yeah. So the dogs came up. I didn't and I did mention you know something about the family and all of that. So. I didn't really list the people out by whatever, but yeah. Um, okay, what kind of tea? Yeah, I'm drinking mint tea right now. Um, so it's a decaf herbal thing, right? Um, and yeah, I've been trying to cut back on the coffee mostly just because I get caffeine gets me jittery, and um, so I have to be careful about that. And then also lately, it's just kind of been upsetting my stomach. So I was just like, yeah, you know what? If it's making me jittery and it's making give me an upset stomach that I'm just gonna you know lay off it for a while and uh, so I'm thinking of trying chicory has anybody tried chicory I was reading a thing about it and they said that it's actually can be beneficial to your gut and your liver and all of that I'm like hmm maybe I should should consider chicory hmm but uh, yeah, so uh, Binjay what do you what what tea are you drinking uh, let's see say says my voice is special I'm glad you like it. You know, that's kind of my strong suit, isn't it? My voice. <laughs> I mean, I'm not all that good at tapping or any of the other stuff, but you know, I got, I got a, I was blessed with a, a you know, a decent timbre of voice. Excuse me. <coughs> um, okay, so EG says, what are your top five computer games of all time? Well, you know, I don't really play that many computer games. So I have to think about this for a quick sec. Um, I really liked um, the um, oh King's Quest. Yeah, the King's Quest thing. Uh, well, Dad, if you're still here, how many King's Quest games were there? There's like five or more of them, isn't there? I like those a lot. Um, but those are old school. This is like, you know, back in the 90s kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah, late 90s, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then otherwise, you know, the games that I currently play that you guys see, um, I do play um, Worldle, uh, which um, I haven't really done on this channel, although that's going to appear on another channel, but that, that'll come up when it comes up. Um, 
Yeah, um, and there's a version of uh, Soko Bond um, that was a, a, a DOS game that was really beautiful. The graphics were really beautiful and the puzzles were very interesting. Uh, it was a lot more intricate than uh, the one I play not currently. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to refine that game. I, I did find a link for it a long time ago, and then I somehow lost place of it. I have to re see if I can research that. Um, yeah. Okay, let me, let me get right back up here. So, greetings all. May the day and night be love. Thank you, Dove. Uh, let's see, so. Uh, okay, so Anne's talking about needing to be worked at a night shift. I had a heart problems, but when he is healthy again, he is jealous and disrespects me real bad. Man, I don't. I wish I had, could, had, you know, could offer you something other than I hope things go well for you. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I, I feel bad, but uh, have I tried yerba mate? It's ass dazed and composed. Um, you know, I don't believe I have. Hmm, not th I don't think so. So I'm going to say no. Um, you know, I might even just not re be remembering it. But um, and so Binjay says Earl Grey. Yeah, you know, tea is less uh, less caffeine than coffee, obviously. So that's you know. Um, and if you have anxiety, then yeah, you need to be careful with the caffeine, man. Um, what I'll suggest is if you still like to have a little bit of caffeine, try green tea because it's even less than black tea. So. Okay, so there's seven of the uh, King's Quest. Yeah, I love that series. That was a lot of fun. It had a good kind of cutesy sense of humor, and the puzzles were interesting. And the graphics were, you know, they were okay. Um, they weren't the kind of graphics that you would see now. They, you know, But I liked them because of the, the aesthetic lived inside of the technical limitations of the time. And I, I, I really liked it. It worked for me. Oh, so a Toster says they know about King's Quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played uh, any of I mean, I guess they did some redos of those, kind of updated them or something. Uh, I, I haven't really played those. I've only played the, the old, uh, I guess, you know, Windows versions. or. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we would, would have been using back in the day. So if I missed anybody else's comments, I think I've got pretty much everybody. Dev says that, the, she, that they played a, a parody game called Peasant's Quest. I am unaware of the Peasant's Quest. I'll have to look into that. Hmm. Is it a similar sort of aesthetic with just the kind of the, you know, the basic, you know, kind of flat uh, graphics and I mean I guess they've kind of made an attempt at being somewhat 3D but you know it's you know it was what it was right While I'm waiting for more comments, I'm going to do some more of this. People seem to have liked it. So I'll do it again. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, Dev, I'll have to definitely look into that and see if I can uh, find a version that I can play on uh, on Linux or maybe use Wine and see if I can get it to function that way.
You know, I don't know. I've never played any of the dazed and composed. I, I keep wanting to say confused. Um, uh, the I don't I don't, haven't played any uh, two D football games, so I, you know I don't know. I'm unfamiliar with them, so I can't really comment on any of that. But so yeah, I'd have to say it's not my jam. But not that I'm anti it. I just don't know anything about it. And uh, okay, the other quest things: police quest, space quest. Oh, I never thought of Leisure Suit Larry being really part of the quest thing, but yeah, okay, yeah, I guess it is, isn't it? Um, and Space Quest, I never saw a Police Quest, though, so I don't know about that one. I never got really into Space Quest, though. I don't remember why. But I remember playing Leisure Suit Larry. That was just silly, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, it was... Have I been to Germany? No, I have not been to Germany. Uh, I've been to the Netherlands. And I went through Brussels, or not Brussels, but Belgium, and uh, through France on my way to the UK. Uh, and I've been to the UK. Um, well, I've been, to, yeah, I guess I've been to, uh, not to Northern Ireland, but I've been to Scotland, Wales, and England. Um, yeah, but I'd, I'd love to go to Germany. I mean, I took German in high school and a little bit in college, and I have uh, some uh, German ancestry. Ich sprich nur ein bisschen Deutsch. That's you know about as much as you can get out of me for the moment. <laughs> um, okay, so Saya says uh, the sound of that song you're humming is so satisfying. Um, well, I'm glad I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I don't. A lot of times I just make little humming, whistling noises, just kind of absentmindedly. So, um, yeah, I hope it's not putting anybody off because you know it's it's easier for me to just let it happen rather than to you know try to be mindful like oh don't make the noises but uh, if, if it's working for you good uh, do I put anything in uh, my green tea yeah I put in a little bit of sugar not much though and lately I've been drinking green tea it's a uh, what brand is it it's Bigelow green tea with ginger um, and I'm pretty I'm enjoying that quite a bit I also occasionally drink ginger tea I like ginger tea as well um, but yeah just a little bit of white sugar not much uh, something that would be less than a lump. Um, yeah, although I have put honey in green tea before too, and that's fine. I, you know, I just need it to be a little bit sweet, not too, not not very sweet at all, though, because green tea to me I, it seems to have such a kind of a light, delicate flavor. You can certainly overpower it by making it too sweet. Anyway, uh, Tyler, hey Tyler, how's it going, man? I am well. Hope you are well as well. Kannst du Deutsch? Um, eh. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do any speaking in German. Yeah, you know, it's just... Uh, so, I mean, you know, I thought about, uh, you know, trying to... Because I actually I found uh, when I was going through my books, which I did that bit of a show and tell on, one of the books I found, I don't know if I put it in the show and tell or not, was an old uh, textbook from when I was taking German at college. And I thought about trying to get that out and, you know kind of brushing up. And there's actually a couple of books that I bought in German that I did show on the, um, one of them was uh, um, uh, uh, Goethe, um, which I thought about, you know, actually reading it in German, right? That makes sense, right? You know, if you're going to read uh, Shakespeare, you should read it in English, right? You know, so if you're going to read Goethe, maybe you should read it in German. Um, but I thought about trying to, you know, do that just for A to, you know, I I'd spent all that time learning a language, and now I, you know, can barely say anything. It's just ridiculous, you know. Um, anyway, so Bin Jay says, half Dutch guy here. Netherlands is such a cool place. Been there about five times. I've been there twice, um, and both times for you know, the first time for three months, and the second time for a little bit short of three months. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, I quite like it. I was in Utrecht. And uh, went up quite a bit to Amsterdam to have fun on nightlife things, and went down to Rotterdam a couple of times, and just sort of some wandering around here and there. But uh, spent most of my time in Utrecht. Um, yeah, I love it there. It's fantastic. All right, Dad. I guess I will see you later then. You know, don't feel obligated though, man. You don't have to, you know, check in. But you know, if you want to, by all means, it's not going to bug me. Tyler says five years of German, but barely remember anything. Yeah. See, I took. Um, let's see. So I took a year in junior high. And I took three years of it in high school, and I think I took two semesters of it in college, right? So I should, and actually at the time, I was reasonably proficient. 
Like I could watch German films and not have to use subtitles and you know, that kind of thing. Um, I could kind of speak to people. I mean, I wasn't as good at speaking as I was understanding just because I never really, you know, you have to make an effort to do that. You know, if you live in California, how many German people are you going to speak with? But um, anyway, yeah. Okay, uh, the biology major, we were required to take a foreign language. No, dude, taking a foreign language is good, man. It's good for your brain. It's absolutely good for your brain. You know, don't, don't fight such things, man. Embrace it. Say so it says, your beard is so bushy we don't see your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, well, that's fine. It's, you know, it's a mystery. Yeah, yeah, Utrecht is nice, isn't it? It's just something that has a really good vibe. I mean, Amsterdam is great. It's bustling, and of course, the red light district and all that kind of stuff going on, and there's nightclubs and this and that. Um, but Ut Utrecht was a very chill, cool place. And there were some cool little bars and places I found to hang out in that I, you know, really found that I was comfortable in. You know what I mean? It was a really nice place. I really, really enjoyed it. How about some? I don't know any Arabic. You know, it might be worth learning. I've thought about trying to learn a language that was, you know, completely linguistically separate from, you know, not Indo-European, you know what I mean? Different set of symbols, you know, the whole thing. Um, so, you know, every once in a while I get this kind of thing in my head that I should, you know, make an effort at learning foreign languages just because, you know, it would make me a better human on the planet. You know, it only, you know, en enable me to speak with even more people, you know what I mean? Um, oh, I see. So uh, Tyler's talking about that he, you know, that uh, engineering computer science people didn't have. Yeah, see, that's their loss, man. You know, I mean, yeah. Well, whatever. Oh, I didn't realize that you were saying that you couldn't see your mouth either. Say, so, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't tell from the little icon here if it shows you having a beard or not. The little pictures are on the little, uh, gives me the chat stream thing so I can read along is all the little pictures are really, really pretty small. <coughs> hmm. Interesting. I was just looking at the stats over here. There's currently 23 people, and the average view duration is 8 minutes 59 seconds. Interesting. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that information other than, you know, I guess try to keep my viewers engaged. You know, I'm <coughs> I'd really rather keep this more relaxed and, you know, just you know, hanging out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, 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 so here we go. Um, oh, it's a character. Okay. My hair. It's uh, there. How long is that? That's how long it is. Okay, so did it did it. I don't understand. Twenty two, yeah, how long I'm missing somehow that somehow my brain is not catching on to what that's about. Were you twenty two ten years ago? Is that what you're saying? I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm a dense guy sometimes. I got something in my eye. Last time I was clean shaven, um, well, it would have been 
uh, well, coming up on 15 years ago, because um, uh, I, I stopped shaving, uh, like I said, on my, it was because of my sister's 40th birthday, because we were watching The 300, that movie, and I'd been drinking quite a bit because it was a party, and um, I made some comment, because some of those guys had, you know, very dramatically, sh you know, beards that were, you know, made to look very, you know, intense or whatever. And I was like, ah, I could grow a better beard than that. And my sister said, well, then do it. And so I said, I will. And then I decided to stop shaving. And then I just kind of let it go. Um, but I wasn't clean shaven at the party. So I shaved, you know, uh, last time I shaved was a couple of days before that. Um, but anyway, let's see. It seems like I've got some comments to catch up on here. Uh, then Jay says, what is the... The max box packs portion of the name sorry it's just been covered okay um it, so it's not really i don't think of that as part of my name it's sort of uh screwed up latin um max box pack so most uh voice piece uh, i guess you know the word order is kind of messed up just because i think it flows better that way so i guess you you know i don't and i'm not good with latin word order anyway so i don't know what the appropriate word order would be if you're following english i guess you would say max packs box um like most peaceful voice um, but I didn't like the way that sounded, but I liked the way that Maxbox Pack sounded. Um, so that's what it is. It's, it's more of a, uh, a declaration of aspiration, right? You know, the idea is like I'm Bill and I want to have the most peaceful voice, right? You know what I mean? That's what the point of the channel is. Um, and you know, like whatever, it's kind of falutin, I suppose, or whatever, but highfalutin, I mean. Um, okay, thanks, Tyler. I think I get it now, yeah. Oh no, 22 viewers. All right. <laughs> okay, now I'm, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, I think I'm getting it now. Okay. Uh, um, no, it's not a tradition of my family. My dad, most of my childhood, wore a beard, um, but not long. It was just, you know, like your basic, you know, normal length of a beard. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, 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 but no, nobody really, it's a, no, it wasn't any tradition of any kind in that regard. Yeah, it was just, but I have a, you know, a lot of the guys in my family have, you know, pretty substantial beards. Um, you know, basically the, uh, you know, the, the actual five o'clock shadow sort of a guy, right? Or even more than that, frankly, is like, you know, shave in the morning and it's like, okay, it's, you know. I would not be sh clean shaven for, you know, very many hours of a day, frankly. Um, but you know, yeah, you just shave, you know, if you want to, I suppose. <clears throat> Hello, Joaquin. How are you today? Welcome to the live stream. There's no real, you know, point or, uh, thrust or focus at this point is just sort of me babbling about you know people say things on the comment section and I try to respond <laughs> well it seems weird there's a means for me to I guess you know chat back you know by typing things in but I'm like well, I don't know I don't it seems odd for in this particular context right I suppose if there was other stuff happening on the screen and I didn't want to interrupt it with speech that, you know, that would be a useful tool to have. But, uh, yeah, I don't imagine I would be using it much. Although I am going to take a, a bathroom break here, so I'm going to be away from the, the screen here for a minute. So I'm going to mute the mic and I will be back momentarily.
Okay, it looks like everything's back on okay. Okay, so here we go. What do I miss here? Did, did it, did it, did it. Okay, I know you said you were down in the ski area previously. How did you end up in the Bay Area? Okay, so um, the Reader's Digest version of that is I was born in the San Diego area in a place called Chula Vista and lived there for the first, I guess, two years of my life. And then my dad got a job uh, as a computer programmer working for Safeway in their data processing center in Oakland. And so we moved up here as a family so that he could do that job. And then I, was, I lived there till uh, I guess, my sophomore year of high school. And then um, went back down to San Diego for a little while and then came back up here and then went back down there and you know, did a little bit of back and forth for a while. Um, I was married, uh, I guess I got married just before I turned 21. And then so I stayed down there. Actually, I stayed down there for quite a bit before then because I was you know, dating the girl that I ended up marrying. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, so that's, uh, that's how I ended up in the Bay Area that way. Um, anyway, so Anne says, am I drinking honey or tea? It's uh, tea. It's mint tea with uh, a little bit of sugar in it. Um, yeah. It's just what's, I, I think it's, it's a, I can't think of the brand, but I guess, I guess it's Celestial Seasons or something like that, peppermint tea. And, oops, hang on, I forgot my little, my little napkin. <coughs> okay, say a bye-bye. I will see you next time I see you. It was good having you here. Hope you had a good time. Okay, so all right, while I'm waiting for somebody else to comment, I'm going to do a little bit more of this. Seems to be people like that a little bit. All right, now let's do this one over here. <laughs> okay, so what do we have now? Okay, I love San Diego, but I've been trying to figure a way to relocate to the Bay or oh, Pacific Northwest. Hmm. Well, if you're going to come up to the Bay Area, hmm. <laughs> so here's the thing. San Francisco is a fantastic city to live in, except for it's as expensive as hell. Um, I managed to get lucky because the guy I was a room, who was my roommate had been there since the 80s in a place that was rent controlled. So we actually had okay rent. And there was people paying way more than we were. I mean, like three or four times what we were paying easily, maybe even more than that. It was crazy. I mean, some of the rents are just insane, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the East Bay is okay. Um, there's parts of Oakland that aren't bad. Uh, there's parts of Oakland that are pretty scary. I used to live in a uh, part of West Oakland that was, uh, you know, whatever. It was fine. I didn't, you know, nothing bad happened to me other than, you know, I got threatened a few times and that kind of thing but you know nothing actual I never actually got robbed or mugged um, but it's the kind of place that you would have you know, maybe been fearful of that happening um, but you know if you can get into some place like Berkeley or Oakland again but the nicer the place the more expensive it gets right and then when you get away from the bay it gets more affordable but it's less you know I don't know it's less appealing to me uh, where I live is in a place called Castro Valley which is kind of nestled between Hayward San Leandro and Oakland um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's suburbs, really. I mean, you know, it's where my parents lighted when, uh, you know, we were living up here. Um, well, yeah, anyway. Um, up, 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 up. Hey, you're back. All right, cool. Peace to you too, Dove. Nick Edgar says, <coughs> Would still love a cool map video, maybe Southern California, your favorite places, points of interest, etc. Hmm, you know, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Oh, thinking of map videos, I'm going to do another gameplay, although it's, I guess, a variation of gameplay, where I think I, because I did one a while back where I played that geography game, because I was trying to learn, you know, the, the countries, you know, of the world, you know, where they are on the map kind of thing. And it's a prompted thing where it, you know you you look at a map, 
and it gives you a country name and then you're supposed to you know, kind of oh this one goes there and uh, but it doesn't require you to remember the countries right you know what I mean so it's like you, they're just going oh here's the country now can you tell me where that is which is different than just looking at a blank map and going oh that's that that's that that's that except for I think I can do that now so I'm going to try that and see if I can do it and, you know basically I guess it's just showing off more than anything really isn't it um, but uh, yeah, and then my next thing is I'm going to start trying to learn the capitals of all the countries of the world. So I'm thinking what I might do, is so it's not just so much a showing off thing on my part, maybe I'll try to do screen capture of me actually trying to, you know, how is it that I'm going to strategize learning, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. And I could kind of walk through and talk about it and that kind of thing. And Mostly what I do is I just make lists and go, hmm, that goes with that and that goes with that, and then look at the map and try to, you know, correlate them. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it would be a cool thing to do. Uh, maybe just you know get out a you know a, a Google Map thing, you know, and just uh, that might be really interesting. That might even be worth doing it like in the like the places I've been, other places, right? You know, what I mean, because man, I haven't been anywhere in the world in so long, uh, you know, outside of you know where I live. Um, it might be kind of interesting to see because I imagine Utrecht does not look anything like it did back in 1998. Is that when I went? Yeah, it was 98 was when I went last time um, so that's the last time I've been to Europe at all uh, so that's a long time ago yeah anyway uh, let's see where are we at here oh I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't get it Saya about the goodbye thing <laughs> uh, like I said sometimes I'm just dense you know um, Yeah, I think San Jose might even be rivaling San Francisco for most expensive place, you know what I mean? Um, which, yeah, uh, you know. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, I haven't really spent much time down there. Um, but, yeah, there's, the whole area has plenty of cool places. It's just, yeah, where you, I, mean, I, I guess it's find the place that you vibe with and if you can afford there, right? You know what I mean? That's the thing. And can find work and friends and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, eight here, so eleven there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably only going to be here for I don't know, maybe another hour. I don't know if I'll last that long. It's that sitting for so long gets on my back a bit, but um, yeah, that'll be enough. And then I'll want to take a break, and then I'll come back at midnight, and then I'll take a break, and then I'll come back at nine in the morning. That's the plan. Yeah. Anyway, so let's move on here. So I'm glad you like the geography video, right? Nick. That's uh, that's cool. I'm glad to know. Yeah, I had a good time in the 90s. Because, um, you know, it was like, let's see, so I was, uh, oh, I guess 25. You know, I was born in 65, right? So in 90, I would turn 25, I guess, yeah. And then, so that was a good era, a good time to be that era, you know what I mean? Or that age and that era went well together, you know what I mean? At least for me. Um, I mean, there's some parts about it that were frustrating because um, the early part, of let's see the, yeah the early part of it was pretty good and then things kind of went sour for a minute because that's when my divorce happened and then uh, yeah but there were some other things about it that were okay um, in my particular instance there was a, a fair amount of decadence um, and indulgence when it came to you know um, sex and drugs and rock and roll you know what I mean to quote Ian Dury um, but yeah, you know, I had a good, pretty good time. I had a pretty good time. Yeah, right. So you would have been, you know, aware of what was up, and you know, say, you know, what I mean, as far as yeah, being the age, you know. Mm. I mean, I suppose any time is actually an okay time to be alive if you focus on, you know, where the stuff is that's worth seeing. You know what I mean? Because um, I know people like to go, oh, music is better, and then fill in the blanks, dot, dot, dot. But, you know, you could, depending on your perspective, you could say that at, at any point in time in history, right? You know what I mean? I mean, there would be people that would, you know, not like the mu music of the 60s as compared to the 50s, and then there's people, you know, that don't like music of the 60s because, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, if you if you you can look for stuff and find things, I think pretty much any era. It's just a matter of making the effort, I think. But uh, um, you know, I was never really much of a wrestling fan, Nam. You know, um, yeah, I just I had friends that were really into it. I just I just couldn't get into the drama of it. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess that's kind of the point of it too, isn't it? Right? You know what I mean? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I never really, yeah, I just I never really, I just never really vibed with it, right, you know? <laughs> okay, how life was a hundred years ago. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, right? You know, and <clears throat> there is a tendency for humans to get nostalgic, right? You know, and I, I can get that. And if you want to be nostalgic for a particular era, then by all means, get nostalgic for the particular era. Um, but when you start denigrating other things, you know, it's like um, I get frustrated when, when people say, oh, music today is, you know, not there isn't any good music today. It's like, yeah, there is. You just have to find it, man, you know? Um, it, yeah, it's, you know. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Joaquin asks what I do for a living. Currently, uh, nothing. I am uh, an unemployed, broke human. Um, largely due to the fact that I have had health issues mostly around, the, well, uh, mostly around my spine. I mean, uh, along with that came, it sort of aggravated some mental health issues that I had, but or have, I guess, though, although those are well managed now with you know medication and the like. Um, but uh, now it's me just trying to overcome, you know, th the fact that I let my degenerative disc disease uh, kind of beat me. And, you know, so I'm, now I'm trying to not have that be the case. So, um, you know, just trying to get in better physical health and, you know, especially, you know, strengthening my back and neck, right? That'd be the thing to, you know, mostly doing, you know, like uh, calisthenics and body weight type things and then, you know, uh, physical therapy exercises that I was given, you know, from a physical therapist when I did date, when I had access to a physical therapist. Anyway. Yeah, there's, you know, there's every, every time period is going to have good music, you know. It's just a matter of finding it. Oh, uh, you know, the being here and just you know digging the scene and you know being supportful and cool and you know so we can have a decent community here and that's the best thing everybody can do yeah you know what i mean if we can just be cool with each other that's that's what i'm looking for at this point um so there you go so you being here is is, is good um you know there you go and uh, so say <coughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, the past is the past, and we have to learn from the past, Saya. But, um, you know, well, I guess you don't have to. I would suggest that we learn from the past, you know. Uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, um, yeah, you, it, people can become neurotic around those things. And you're right, it is sad. Um, you know, I don't want to, I mean, I get, you know, curmudgeonly. You know, mostly it's just about me getting frustrated and dealing with people just because, you know, my own, you know, grumpiness at times, I guess. Um, but... Uh, Let's see, HopX1. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, I am doing well. Uh, thanks for showing up, man.
Well, it seems that we maintain a pretty uh, consistent count of 23 people. <coughs> yeah, there you go, say that. Yeah, don't, yeah, just... It seems to me like you kind of get the vibe I'm after, right? You know what I mean? If, as long as people are cool and respectful to each other and you can, you know, you can take things from, you know, all kinds of places and, you know, find art where you find it. Because I use, I kind of use the idea of art, not just in, you know, the terms of, you know, like Picasso art, well, that kind of thing, but anything, I, more of an anthropological perspective. You know what I mean? Like anything that humans do to convey, you know, thoughts and emotions to other humans using, you know, some kind of material means, whether it's, you know, using their own body with song or dance or whatever, or making stuff, um, you know, is, is a good thing for humans to do. And, and most places are going to have, you know, something that's worth, worth encountering, whether it's a place or a time frame or whatever. Wow, Am, that's fucking very generous of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's, you know, a fantastic thing. And, uh, yeah, excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Victor Delgado asks if I've ever played Minecraft. Um, no, I haven't. I've been thinking about that because other people have asked me if I might do that for a gameplay. Um, and I think I can get it to run on... Um, I've only superficially looked into it, so I have to look more into it. I think I can get it to run on Pop! OS. I think there's a version that I'll be able to play here on this, on this platform. Um, and if that's the case, then... Um, yeah, then yeah, I, mean, I think I think maybe I will. But yeah, I, I've seen other people play it. I think uh, the French Whisperer has uh, a bunch of stuff with Minecraft that he built like a uh, like a whole city kind of thing, right? Um, so yeah, I guess that you know, yeah, if it worked for him, maybe you know, maybe my subscribers would like it as well. I'm sure that there's probably well, I know that there's people that you know that where there's an overlap because people have mentioned him. So you know. Um, and Space Cowboy. Well, you yeah, know, cool. I'm glad you, you've been here, Space Cowboy. And da, 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 da. Um, so say I asked how it was in the 70s. Um, you know, let's see. So I was a kid during the 70s. Uh, I was born in 65. So, um, so, yeah, so 70, you know, up to... Yeah, it was okay. You know, I liked it. It was all right. I mean, I it was getting exposed at an early age to all kinds of, you know, I don't know, counterculture stuff kind of leaked into my existence. Um, and, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, of course, you know, disco happened and punk rock happened and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you know, it was, it was pretty groovy. It was pretty groovy. I mean, I was, I was too young to really partake in... Uh, disco properly or, or any of that and, uh, and also punk rock you know was happening you know I was you know getting to be of an age you know um, where it would make sense for me to be you know into it and it's like when, I remember when Devo played uh, Saturday Night Live that was pretty cool I was very into that and you know it's like wow I was because you know, um, yeah I, I had been exposed to Devo before via Dr. Demento of all things if any of you remember that show um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than that. <laughs> oh man, I'm hard, sorry to hear about the COVID thing, Ben Jay. It's uh, that sucks. I have managed to avoid that demon. Uh, my dad got it, uh, although it was pretty mild, luckily, because um, uh, well, you know, he was had his vaccinations and boosters and all that stuff. So I mean, it was you know. It basically played out for him like it's just a bad flu, you know. So thankfully, though, because you know it played out much worse for others. Um, right. So you said what? You said you were born in '77. Am I remembering that right? So yeah, I mean, so. Your 80s were like my 70s, you know what I'm saying? Roughly, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, pretty groovy, huh? 
do I vape? I vape cannabis. I no longer use nicotine of any kind. I decided to just get rid of the nicotine thing altogether. And I'll tell you what, nicotine was difficult to quit. <laughs> oh, kills says, or is that zero kills? Have you ever thought of doing reverse ASMR instead of having a soothing voice? You pretty much just ham and scream and demolish everyone's ears instead. Um, no, I actually haven't thought about doing that. I mean, you know, even when I was in rock bands and stuff, I wasn't really, I didn't ever play in bands that were all that aggressive, frankly. Um, it was never really my thing. Although, I, you know, I enjoyed that kind of thing. I, I probably still would if I you know, went out to clubs. I don't really go anymore, but. Um, I've been in my share of mosh pits and the like. Um, I don't know, have I told you guys my uh, blackout mosh pit story when I was, uh, well, I'll tell it. If I've already told it, I'll tell it again. And if, you know, if it's boring the hell out of you, then too bad. Um, so uh, let's see, this would have been, um, man, I don't remember the year. What year did Nevermind come out? Because it, uh, it was just, it was either just after or just before Nevermind came out. Uh, the um, the Nirvana album. Um, anyway, they were there was a oh man, what was this place called? It was a place in uh, Tijuana. Iguanas is what it was called. It was a a, a venue down in Tijuana, um, and uh, Dinosaur Junior was playing, and Nirvana was opening, and it was a great show, fantastic show. Um, Anyway, so I was in the, the pit for while Nirvana was on stage and, you know, just doing the, you know, mosh pit slam dance sort of thing. And um, I unluckily happened to be in a position where a dude over here and a dude behind me, their heads came together and smacked my head um, like crack. And it was like boink. And like my vision just went like a TV screen going out. And I was out. I mean, I was dead. I just totally knocked out. Um, and I came to still in the mosh pit upright, like the mosh pit was so dense that I couldn't fall down. <laughs> it was just crazy. And I was like, oh, I, you know, when I came to, I, find, I had to kind of make my way out because I was like, OK, I need to not be in there for a while. <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was uh, anyway. So anyway, where was I at? Uh, say I was talking about uh, disco moment. Ah, uh, uh, picture of a baby with a disco ball, crazy. Well, I'm glad that you're taking care of yourself, Ben J. I mean, and that it's not super horrible. I mean, and you know, hopefully it's you know, hopefully your wife is taking good care of you. And e boogie, you're switching to edibles, man. See, I. Uh, I don't know. There must be something to do with the way my liver processes um, the the THC and the whatever the hydroxy, would you call it, that it turns into. Because uh, I have to eat quite a bit, so it's like I have nothing, 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 and I have to keep eating it, and then all of a sudden, doom, you know what I mean? It's like there is no mellow middle ground for me. You know what I mean? So if I'm going to do edibles, it's like I have to. It's going to cost me a lot of money, but then I'm going to get really, really crazy stoned. You know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's about, but I wonder if it's to do with uh, some of the meds I'm on or something like that. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe it's because I spent so many years as being a blackout drunk. Maybe my liver just doesn't you know, handle it very well anymore. I don't know. Um, but you make oil now. Okay, right on. So you do your own extraction. Are you pressing it or are you using a solvent or, you know? Um, Okay, so Say is saying the old tapes of my dad recording back then, there was always groovy disco music playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, there was, uh, yeah, there was some pretty cool stuff. Casey and the Sunshine Band, you know? Okay, so it's so zero kills. Thanks for answering. You know, I don't even remember which question of yours I answered. I'm getting so kind of behind. Let me scroll up and make sure the hell I know what I'm talking about here. Holy miracle, where'd it go? 
I can't even keep track of what's going on here. Well, I can't find it now. Okay, well, I'm just... All right, anyway, so let's see. Eric says... Okay, well, there you go. And... 1991, okay, thank you. And say I said something and then took it away. Okay, that's cool. The mosh pit story, yeah. <laughs> that amuses me now. I mean, at the time, it was like, I was like, oh, and a mackerel. <laughs> but, you know, now I can look back on it and just laugh, yeah. Well, I guess at the time I did too. I mean, you know, after I was over the pain and the, my head cleared and I was okay, you know, because it was fine. It was, you know, obviously I was out cold and I, well, that's another thing. I probably shouldn't have kept drinking. Of course, I did. I, you know, because I was just drinking like a fool back then. But, um, you know, yeah. So edibles that are so hard to gauge. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So here's the thing. So I use. Um, I will occasionally smoke flour, but I like to do the um, the little cartridges, the little vapey cartridges. Um, I find that the uh, the place that's actually just you know like. Uh, four blocks from here I can walk down and there's a place I can you know that's a dispensary um, and they sell some uh, a couple of brands of cartridges I couldn't tell you the names of them I know the labels when I see them um, but they're, they're really consistent there's the thing you know what I mean um, yeah 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 they're really really consistent and Anthony asks do I collect anything um, yeah um, I have a couple of collections of things I have uh, some elephants and I have some masks. Um, yeah, you know, maybe I could, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I will go get some of my masks and show them off in a minute. <coughs> Say, it says that he was in a mosh pit once while performing, but you were scared. With new Nick was, I guess I don't understand that reference. Um, sorry, uh, Jamie Kitson. Thank you very much. That's very generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. You guys are really cool. Yeah, that's that's really amazing. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, Am says, do I still have the elephant collection? Um, yeah, I do. They're in a box. Um, so I, I, yeah, it's, that's the thing. The, the place I live in right now, I don't really have a me, I don't really have any place to really display anything like that. So they're still in boxes at the moment. Same with the masks. It's just I don't know where I would hang them right now. And uh, the way that things are upstairs, which is kind of the, where everybody else lives, I just kind of have this little live workspace that I've carved out to be my project studio and where I sleep and all that. Um, so yeah, all that stuff's kind of in limbo. Um, but uh, yes, I still have the Ellison collection. I'm not getting rid of those. Yeah, yeah, I've already answered that, haven't I? Um, mask sounds cool. Yeah, to that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Say, so, yeah. all right, right on. <laughs> right on, right on. You know, maybe I will just for whatever the uh, the thing. Let me go root around in my box over here and see about showing you guys a couple of masks. So just bear with me a moment.
So, I'll just show you a couple of them. I think I might have shown some of these already in a different video a long time ago. One of them I'm pretty sure I haven't, but I'll show you that one last because it's kind of a, I find it to be the most exciting one. So let's see, just start these. Okay, so this one, I'm pretty sure it came from Mexico, but it was a gift. All, almost all of these were, well, actually, they're all gifts from friends. Um, this one is, uh, it's always kind of a pain to put them back together. There we go. Do, 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 do. Anyway, so there's this one, right? Do, 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 do. So you can see that, right? And if you look at the back, you can see, you know, that. It's actual, you know, handmade carved. You can see all the carving tool marks and all of that. And I don't know, some kind of devil, demon, bull. I don't know what it is, man. It's just crazy scary, though, isn't it? Um, yeah. Anyway, so there's one. Yep. All right. And, oops, okay. And this one is from Bali. A friend of mine got this for me. And I see the, oops, that totally clipped. Sorry about that. Doot, 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 doot. I like the fact that it articulates, yeah. And a friend of mine gave me this. And it's, uh, does it say where it's from? Okay, it was made in Nepal. And I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Ganesh or Ganesha or however you're supposed to pronounce that. Right? And again, this is, right, you can see that it's all carved right out of actual wood, right? You know, this isn't some mass produced thing. And okay, I'll put that back over here. Actually, no, let me take these back. Pardon me again, I'm going to be away from the screen for a minute. And then there's this one. This is from Thailand. Again, another friend of mine gave me this. And again, you can see the all the tool marks and stuff on the back there. Yeah. And it's pretty groovy. Yeah, pretty fantastic. I really, really like this one. And then now, the one that's uh, my favorite one, actually. This one comes from Sri Lanka. And how is that? Right? And the colors on it and the face of it. And then you can see the peacock on the head, right? You know what I mean? That's just absolutely amazing. And then the details on the face down there around the eye and stuff. That's just absolutely amazing. My mom got this one for me. She didn't go to Sri Lanka. She got it at a, uh, well, a place that was an import place. She saw it and went, I have to get that for my son. And it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Anyway, so there you go. That's just a portion of them, but that's, that's about all it is. It's gonna be easy for me to get at, you know, without having to, you know, pull out a bunch of stuff. So there you go. That's, uh, so there you go. Okay, let's see if I miss comments here. Okay, uh, the, 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 back to Jamie's gift. Thank you very much, Jamie. That's fantastic. Um, mask, okay, we did that. Da, 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 mosh pit, da, da, da. I 
house tour video would be interesting. Yeah, you know, I don't know about a house tour video because I my I am not a good housekeeper and I would not be wanting to show off the mess that is what I live in. <laughs> it's just uh Well, of course you did. You have to you have to you know, have to do what you need to do, Saya. Absolutely. Zelda vibes, okay, right on. Voodoo vibes, okay. I'm glad you like the masks, man. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, I have a, I've had more, although, you know, maybe I shouldn't have shown those ones because those are kind of some of my favorites. Um, some are more, you know, pedestrian than others and just what sort of, you know. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's a fantastic hat, the fantastic, fantastic stuff. I love masks. And it's, you know, yeah, it just started as a, somebody bought me one as a Christmas thing. Um, and it was really just sort of a, an unassuming, uh, like one of those, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Harlequin type thing, one of those Harlequin faces, and uh, I hung it on my wall, you know. Um, and people went, "Oh, hey, you like masks?" And then people just started giving me masks, and uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so there it is. Yeah, I like masks, masks and elephants. Those are the things that the, you know, I'd like to collect guitars, but uh, that's you know, <laughs> I have not the financial means to be doing that. Um, Anyway, Anthony asks, how did I get introduced to ASMR? Um, well, ASMR is the community on YouTube. I accidentally found, uh, I don't even remember who it was. It was before anybody called it ASMR. It was a young woman doing a whisper video. And I was like, what is this? this is cool. And, you know, I was instantly doing the tingly thing. But I have always had ASMR. I mean, I, well, I had ASMR. I don't know, is it a condition or whatever? I've always, you know, gotten tingles off of various uh, sensations. Um, I mean, I, yeah, ever since I can remember. Um, yeah, but I used to think it was, I used to I think I was just in a weirdly eccentric, you know, part of my brain being different than everybody else's, you know, I mean, I was pretty aware of that since I, you know, well, pretty much forever. Um, so yeah, yeah, but yeah, I hope that answers your question there, Anthony. Um, okay, Marshall says, restore the train ride videos, top 10 of all time ASMR vids running. You know, I would like to do more of those story ideas, Marshall. Um, the thing is, is they all kind of come from somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like a, there's like a seed of it that's out of my real life that I've kind of just turned into a story that I can tell. You know what I mean? And um, so I don't know. I'll have to, you know, I, I, that's the thing I, I want to work on. I would like to do more of that. Um, but I need them for my own... Uh, artiness and my own humanness, whatever. I, I need them to be so that I feel like they're somehow authentic, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so I don't, I don't want to just make stuff up out of the blue, you know. Um, although I've been toying with that too, just the idea of like making up fictions and turning them into some kind of story. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess there's value in both things. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I wrestle with that, I guess. Um, but it's not easy for me to come up with those things. When they do, well, there's the thing. Like, I don't, it's not like anything I actually work at. You know what I mean? It's sort of a thing, like, it's like a flash thing. I go, ooh, that'll be a good thing. You know what I mean? And that's where they come from. Um, so, yeah. Am says, why elephants? Okay, the elephants thing actually comes from my great-grandfather. I've shown you guys this before. I don't know if it'll ever show up on the camera. Um, anyway, I'll show it up here anyway. Do, 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 do. Wait, 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 up here, there we go. Uh, there we go. Can you see? I don't know if it'll focus on it to say. I guess it doesn't. Anyway, it has my name engraved on it. Um, anyway, uh, my great grandfather had some cups made. There's four of them. Because um, at one point in time, there were four Williams alive. Uh, in my family, there was a tradition of uh, the first of a generation being named William. And then it was uh, William, mother's maiden name, Poshman, right? And uh, Williams always beget Williams. Um, but I'm the first William not of a William. My dad is a gene. Um, anyway, so, it's, you know, so in a way, I'm a little bit of a breaking of a tradition. Anyway, my great-grandfather had a lot of uh, elephant stuff. 
and Ed, unfortunately, it was actual ivory, you know, those carved ivory things where it's a chain of elephants, you know, each grabbing onto the next one's tail kind of thing. Um, anyway, he had several of those types of things in this one study, and he had a really, really nice house. He, had a, he was pretty well off. Um, anyway, um, I loved that stuff, and I was the first grandchild of the generation, right? So, you know, Williams are always the first of a generation. And so um, I was, well, I was everybody's favorite until, you know, other kids came along, you know what I mean? That was just kind of the way it was. Um, so I remember being in that study with him um, and uh, just adoring these elephants that he had. And ever since then, I've just had a thing for elephants, you know? Um, now, the thing is, I don't collect actual ivory, all the things I have. I have a couple of things that, look, that resemble those things, um, but they're made out of resin and stuff like that, um, just because I don't want to, I think, the brutality of the ivory trade is just disgusting. So, you know, I, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Um, anyway, so... Uh, that, 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 that. Uh, Jamie Kitson asks if I still program. No, I haven't programmed in ages. Um, so, no, I'm not working on a project. Um, <coughs> yeah, I thought about maybe trying to just make up something, you know, that I could just do rudimentarily you know, just some kind of basic thing that I might do just in JavaScript. Uh, that, you know, the point of it being that, like, maybe I would actually, like, talk through the coding of it to make an ASMR video, you know what I mean? So it wouldn't be anything too elaborate or crazy just because, you know, I don't want to invest that much time in it, frankly. Um, I got burned out on programming. You know, that, you know it's just, yeah, it's, it, you know. Um, I've often thought that, you know, maybe I could try to go back into it, um, I don't know if that would be possible because I ended up, well, I ended up getting blacklisted because of a DUI and nobody would hire me. And the headhunter was like, dude, sorry, I can't help you anymore. Bye. Um, I mean, that's obviously the short version of it, but yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, it cost me a really, really good gig too. Anyway, um, yeah, sadness happens or sad things happen, I guess you'd say whatever. Um, but no, so the, I guess no, I guess the short answer is no, I don't have any projects that I'm working on. Um, are you asking because you do pro do program and do you have any projects or have we talked about this before have you mentioned that you programmed before hmm I don't know somebody mentioned uh, I'm drawing a blank now but I talked to somebody about some programming stuff in the in a different video and yeah my brain is sometimes my memory is I don't know it gets you know fuzzy being an old man you know you forget shit <laughs> And I'm not even that old. I'm just middle-aged, but, you know. Ah, I now came back. It's coming up on 8.40. Yeah, I think probably around 9 is when I'll wrap this up because I'm going to be back on at midnight, so. And I don't have the stamina in my back to just muscle all the way through and just do, you know, like 12 hours of streaming that, you know, uh, seems kind of appealing in a way, but I just don't think I have the physical stamina to do it. Nice. Oh, that's in response to your uh, your thing, Jamie. Right on. What kind of stuff are you? Uh, anything that any of us would have seen or you know be able to recognize or anything like that, or is it all just? Yeah, I think about it, you know, just because I, I realize there's money in it and it's, you know, it's a valuable skill set. And, and frankly, I was good at it. I mean, um, I don't, not that I was, you know, a rock star or anything like that. Um, I think I did a lot of, well, uh, I did some customizing of a thing that was from a company called Docent back in the day. And that's kind of where I kind of got my foot into things. But then for a while, I did a lot of uh, using, well, Docent stuff was proprietary. Um, 
but then after that I was doing things web stuff it, using the lamp type solution right and um, I did a fair amount of troubleshooting and fixing other people's screw-ups um, just because I kind of developed a knack for it and but it's like uh, it's a headache man <laughs> it's a headache having to read other people's stuff and try to figure out where it's broken and a lot of times it would just be like okay I see where it's supposed to hook in and do a thing can I just disregard this crap and just redo it you know what I mean in a different way um, you know anyway but it was yeah uh, you know a lot of it obviously with PHP that was a thing right you know um, I quite liked PHP I thought it was a good th I think the whole lamp you know the uh, what is it limit Linux Apache MySQL PHP right that was the you know the, the thing um, I thought it was a good place to do stuff you know I mean obviously it isn't it deep in you know like when you're doing the, the C stuff but um, you know it's all higher level stuff you know just scripting language stuff but um, although when I was a kid I did stuff um, I think I mentioned this before uh, my dad had computers around when I was a kid that was you know back in the 70s though and we had an exity sorcerer and I, you know, did some, you know, rudimentary programming on that. You know, I think that was, you know, uh, Z80 or something was the machine language for that. Um, well, I'm glad you enjoy it, Jamie. You know, I mean, that was the thing, right? If, if, if it's because it can be good work. I mean, my dad did it, you know, f you know, for that was his career was for, you know, my entire awareness of him. I mean, he had other jobs when I was a baby, but, you know, he found that that was not going to work. So then he, uh, um, you know, got into computer programming back in the 60s, right? So that was the thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm glad you enjoy it, man. That's groovy. Anthony asks, what instrument do I play? Um, guitar. I also fiddle with uh, keyboard and percussion. Um, I've got, you know, the a keyboard. It's a, you know, MIDI thing and a MIDI percussion pad. Um, anyway, this will be a prime opportunity for me to get something out from behind the curtain. Some of you have already seen this jacket. This is my guitar. This is my Rickenbacker. It's a Rickenbacker 620. It's an actual real live honest to goodness Rickenbacker made in the USA from the 70s. Um, it's been through a lot thus I put new plastic on it because at the time it well it got broken. It, it got damaged. Luckily the only thing that really got damaged is the pick guard which is the thing that has all the electronics except for you know just the pickups and as a temporary solution I've told this before so if it, all of you've heard this before you whatever um, uh, as a temporary thing because I didn't have the money to get the, the new electronics and pick guard you know to put on here um, so I just wired both pickups straight to the jack so it's just like having both pickups on 10 all the time um, but I got to like it <laughs> So if I want any dynamics, man, it's this hand. That's how I get dynamics here. That's it, you know what I mean? But it's got a narrow neck. I need to clean it, man. My hand sweats so much, and I didn't wipe it off last time. That's horrible. Um, narrow neck, super low action, pretty shallow neck. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. This is this is my guitar. I've got an EVH too, but this is. That, you know, I'd love to have a lot more guitars, but I only have the two right now. I put that curtain up just because, or it's a sheet, but because I have just so much junk and stuff there, I just don't want to have it be a distraction behind me. So, anyway, um, there you go. So that was my that was my Rickenbacker. Uh, other people have seen it before, but uh, yeah, I love that guitar. I really love that guitar. If I had a lot of money, I'd buy a lot of Rickenbackers. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people don't really dig them, but because most people just see them and they think the Birds and the Beatles, you know what I mean. But I don't play that at all. You know what I mean. You can, you can get good sounds out of those guitars. Um, I can get good sounds out of I think I can get good sounds out of those guitars, you know. Um, oh, so you've been playing guitar for 13 years. Right on, man. So you probably have some skills, yeah. Um, what is your axe? Jonathan Franz and Purple Haze all up in my head. Right on. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy's fantastic, yeah. Man, I remember the first time I heard Jimmy Hagendrix. It was Purple Haze, actually. And I was just like, what is this? That was a thing, man. That was a thing for me, man. That was all my, I didn't even remember how old I was. I think maybe I was like, you know, sixth or seventh grade or something like that. And it's like, I'd heard, you know, other rock music and stuff. I'd listen to rock radio. 
but somehow it was like the, the, the you know hearing purple haze was just like wow and then the, the guy i was hanging out with that day he goes oh that's jimmy hendrix man my mom has one of his records right because <laughs> his mom was a hippie from the 60s like you know complete berkeley hippie head kind of person and uh so we went back over to his house and he played it for me i was just like man that was a life-changing thing for me crazy i mean i'm not the only one i mean hendrix has impacted so many guitarists it's just just nuts man Did I get into theory at all? Yeah, I took a semester of theory at college, and then I took a, a course called the Jazz Theory of Improvisation, except for the lady that taught it. I mentioned it a little while ago at DVC, uh, Diablo Valley College in Contra Costa. Um, uh, it wasn't really a theory class. <laughs> she handed out charts uh, with well, it was just heads, you know, with the you know written out with the, a staff thing for all the horn players, and then chords, you know, just noted out at the top. And she just passed that out and asked everybody, can you see what's going on? You, can you read it? Everybody, yeah. And then, okay, one, two, three, four, boom. And there you go. I mean, we, she had us playing like Thelonious Monk and stuff, like just tossed us into the deep end, you know? So here we go. Uh, she brought in a, a drummer that she knew did so we could have a drummer. There was a bass player, luckily, that just, you know, had signed up for the class. There was two other guitarists and then a bunch of horn players, right? You know, horn and reed and that kind of thing. And, uh, man, she just tossed us into the deep end, though. And I learned so much more in that class than any place else. You know what I mean? And I stopped worrying about names and scales and stuff. And I just started like going, okay, I need to, I need to find a voice. You know what I mean? I need to get a thing going. And, uh, and as a, yeah, that was man, that was a powerful class for me. Um, I suck at jazz, frankly, but um, man, but it was a thing to do. It was a thing to do. I mean, it helped. It, it did, it did things to my brain, man. <laughs> It absolutely did things to my brain. But yeah, I did take I did take some theory, and you know, there's value to it, right? Because I I wouldn't have been able to do that jazz class if I hadn't taken the theory class. You know what I mean? Because it to start with, I needed to know what those chords were and you know what scales you know kind of would go on top of them and then i kind of had to learn to forget that you know what i mean it was a um okay so you play jazz right so i don't know i mean i don't know what your approach is um and she was very much into bop like bebop that was her thing you know i mean um but you know yeah she's also the one that told me um She's like, yeah, you know, I, I get what you're, because, you know, she kind of, you know, actually she had a conversation with, uh, you know, there's, like I said, two other guitarists, and she kind of took us aside each and did a thing and, you know, talked to us as a group and then kind of took us aside. And like, I, and basically the gist of it was, um, she's like going, dude, I, I, well, she didn't say dude, um, but uh, she's like, look, I get that you're a good guitarist and you've got technique and your fingers can do cool things, um, but I don't find it terribly musically interesting to dig, you know what I mean? She's like, learn to play with your breath. Learn to come up with phrases. Learn to, learn to say something. You know, it's not about impressing people, man. And it was like, because I was just way too immature as a musician. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like oh, I wanted to be, you know, Mr. Dee Dee Lee Dee, you know? And uh, she kind of was like the Zen master with the bamboo stick swatting me on the head. You know what I mean? Going, dude, wake the fuck up. You know? Um, that was really good. It was a good class. Like I said, it did things to my mind, man. <laughs> it was really good playing in that class. Well, Tom's British ASMR. Yeah, you know, I've the, the live stream, I kind of dabbled in it a couple of times a long time ago, and I don't know, I didn't just whatever, but I, this is a new thing. I'm just, but it's, I'm gonna, it's on the regular now. The Whatever weekend is closest to the middle of the month is gonna be, you know, I'm gonna do uh, multiple streams over that weekend. So the idea is I want, you know, it's a cool thing for me to make videos and have you guys comment and go, hey, good video, and then I get ad revenue and, you know, it'll buy me weed now and again. Um, but uh, it's, I don't know, I, I just think there's value in this, you know what I mean? Being able to, to hook up with you guys and just, you know, like, hey, we're humans, like, you know, let's interact, you know? Um, and also it had been suggested to me to, by somebody that I should look into doing a Discord, which I, I have not used Discord at all, but I'm gonna look into that because uh, it's my understanding that that also can allow for, you know, some more interaction and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
Yeah, because as much as, I, like I said, as much as I want to make the videos, I do. I want to do that. I'm going to be doing that until I croak. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know. It, 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 I think there's value in. I mean, it's not even because, like, the YouTube, of course, likes it. Because oh, if you create community, then because they're looking to you know get your eyeballs so they can sell you to advertisers, right? And I get that, and that's fine. I can live within that framework because they give us the platform, right? You know, we wouldn't have this if they didn't do that. Um, although I like the old days better, but you know, whatever. Um, you know, just cause, I don't know. I, anyway, I don't want to go on and on about that. But um, yeah, I, I just I just want it to be because it has grown and it isn't like it was say back you know you know 10 or 11 years ago or whatever um or 11 or 12 years ago really um i mean so so it's morphed right the whole environment has changed you know um but i think you know if so if i want it to be better than it is now then i have to make the effort right you know what's the deal right it's you know be the change you want to see in the world right you know what i mean so i'm trying to make some effort and you know and uh be a human you guys be humans right we can be humans together <laughs> right you know what i mean <laughs> here's the weird hippie saying let's all be humans anyway okay let's see uh tony or tom excuse me tom's got another uh, da, 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 da. like the show and tell good good well you know groovy because you know i you know i don't know if my musings are worth listening to but uh, you know thank you for suggesting they might be um yeah that's the thing sometimes if you get me talking on a topic i could just babble and babble and babble uselessly about all kinds of nonsense but okay last question jamie says last question da, 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 da. okay so yes i do have some advice on that um first off uh if you're feeling like it's not the right thing for you, then don't do it. It's not the right thing for you yet. You know what I mean? Um, because it's it's it it impacts your psychology. Absolutely, it does. Um, and I would say if you're going to go into uh, psychedelics, it, it the or, you know, I would recommend that you start with mushrooms. I mean, if you want to go further and do other things, absolutely, you know, do your own exploration. Um, but um, you know. If you're anxious or anxiety ridden, like you know, gonna, uh, like you think you're going to have a bad trip, then just don't do it yet. You know what I mean? Um, also, some people it's good to have a babysitter. You know what I mean? Like I've not had babysitters many times, but again, I'm kind of a screwball. Um, and I, you know, I've had a history of doing things kind of irresponsibly. So you know, don't follow my example. Follow my advice. I guess is the thing. Um, so. Uh, maybe do it with somebody who's got some experience you know and then maybe have somebody sit with the you know like if it's you and another person doing it and then another person to just kind of be the babysitter that might be a good first time i wouldn't go for the heroic dose you know what i mean i don't care what terence mckenna says yeah you know what i mean um although i don't think he's ever advised anybody to go heroic the first time but a lot of people get this romantic notion um and it's like yeah you know don't don't fall into that i mean you, you can have fun if you're looking to have fun go lightweight you know what i mean um, if you're, you know, and if you're looking for a therapeutic thing, I would say start lightweight and maybe don't even get so into it. Maybe, you know, just get on the edge of things like in the, you know, a little bit heavier than microdosing kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, if you really are looking to do some exploration or whatever, then I'd yeah, start, start small. You know what I mean? Because it may not be for you. You know what I mean? It's not for everybody. You know, everybody's got their own path, you know. Um, but if, if, you, if you think you're into it, then, you know, um, you know. I, you know, because here's the thing, I don't now because it's, there's no research to show whether or not it would be safe for me to do with Lamotrigine. That's the, uh, that and Wellbutrin, those are the two drugs I take for my head. Um, and so I'm not going to until I can either find out, you know, that it's safe or if I, you know, get a, a big enough hair up my butt, then I'll talk to a psychiatrist about switching, you know, to a different, uh, you know, formula of, you know, pills. But I'm successfully using these pills, so I'm, I'm loathe to go play with that very much right now. Um, but yeah, if you're, um, you know, here's the thing, um, if you're on antidepressants and that's the idea, cause there has been a lot of research into especially psilocybin for, uh, depression and the like, um, then, uh, yeah, I mean, I would look into it, find information, arm yourself with information. You know what I mean? And again, like I said, uh, you know, 
take care of yourself, right? That's the thing. Don't don't do anything goofy and romantic, right? Anyway, Classics says, I have seen my sister's friend playing guitar a lot around 2012. I don't know how people control their time. <laughs> well, you know, it's like any skill, Classics. Uh, it's, it's a thing you have to, well, it takes an investment of time, right? I mean, some people take to things easier than others, I suppose. Um, but the truth is, if you want to get, if you want to play guitar well, then it's going to take an investment of time. And you know, once you invest that time, the mystery will collapse, and you'll be able to understand how they do it. I mean, there will be people that will always impress you, and you'll like. I'll look at things that Hendrix does, and I go, "Man, how do you do that?" It's like I know how he did it. It's just I can't. You know what I mean? Um, you know. And a lot of it has to do with feel. You know what I mean? You can learn technique. Like, you can learn and you can practice to be able to play a certain series of notes at a certain speed in a certain way and get a certain rhythm, you know, whatever. That just takes practice. But getting the feel and having it sound beautiful, now that's a different thing. And that takes an entirely different investment of time and a different mindset, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you know. Um, but if you just want to chill and play guitar, um, you know, get a decent guitar and learn how to play cowboy cards and, you know, cowboy chords and, you know strum along and sing things, you know what I mean? You can piss off all your friends by breaking out the guitar every party, you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of a weird question, but do you have any life advice? I'm a senior in high school and I'm just trying to get through things. Okay, um, life advice. <laughs> uh, try not to let things wig you out. You know what I mean? I know people have probably told you this before, but you know, you're just a young person, but that's a true thing, right? You can screw up and harm yourself, right? So don't do that. You know what I mean? Like don't do, I mean, well, I did a lot of stupid things, but so don't do stupid things. I'll tell you that from firsthand experience. Um, and you have to be able to judge what that is for yourself. But, um, you know, uh, so, but I guess the main thing is like, you, you are young and there is a lot of, you know, whatever in front of you. I mean, unless, you know, I mean, tragedy strikes and that kind of thing. Um, but you don't let, don't have that ruin your life either. You know what I mean? It's, just realize that you, you have a future and it's like the things you're doing now are to prepare, to prepare you for what's coming ahead. I mean, that's going to be true for your whole life, really. It's just as we get older, we tend to go, ah, you know, I, I already know shit. And it's like, ah, you do to a point, but, you know. Um, so there's my advice. Don't try not to let things get into your head to the place that they're ruining things for you. You know what I mean? Um, like I've, I've told this before, but it's a, I think it's worth saying. Um, and that's why I'll bore you guys with it again. There's this story that I heard, I'm pretty sure it was from Alan Watts. And he's talking about these two monks. And they're on this little journey. And they're walking along and they come across this stream or a river. And they're looking for a place to cross it. And there's no real bridge or good place to ford it. And so they decide, oh, we're just going to have to wade across, I guess. So they're going to you know, pull up their robes and wade across. But as they're preparing to do that, a young woman comes up, and she's all dressed in some finery, right? And she's off to go to, I don't know, some kind of party or something. Who knows? Um, but she's all, oh, woe is me. I'm going to get my mess, all my stuff's messed up and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so one of the monks says, okay, get on my shoulders, and I'll you know, give you a piggyback ride across, right? So he carries her across. And then you know, she gets off his back, and you know, he lets her down. And... And, you know, they, she thanks him and he says, okay, you know, no problem, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they part ways and they go on their, you know, whatever they're doing. Anyway, after a ways, after that, they're walking along together, the two monks, after they parted ways with the young woman. And the monk that didn't carry the young woman uh, turns to the other guy and goes, man, you know, brother, in our order, you're not supposed to be, we're not supposed to have physical contact with women. It's, you know, part of our oath of, you know, chastity and all that. And the guy is looking at the other guy and he goes, well, yeah, you're right, except for I put her down back there. Why are you still carrying her? Right? You dig what I'm saying, man? So learn to like when to put the lady down. You know what I'm saying? That, that, there's, there's a piece of life advice, I guess. You know? And, uh, well, hopefully, you know, that, hopefully that, that, that helped you, classics. <laughs> Got a couple of conversations going on at once, right? Yeah. Okay, you know what, you guys, um, if anybody has any quick last minute things, because it's nine o'clock, I've been here since six, so I'm gonna go take a break. I will be back at midnight, however. Um, so, you know, there you go. If any of you guys wanna come back, meet me here at midnight. Um, 
Okay, so one last thing, opinions on Radiohead. I'm pretty unfamiliar with their material, to be honest. I know there's a couple of things that were the radio hits back in the day, and I enjoyed them, but they never captured me enough that I went and bought their records or anything like that. So, you know, um, you know th there's a lot of music that that happens with. You know, I mean, there's just so much stuff to listen to that you can't catch everything. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that's disappointing, but damn, there you go. Ah. Okay, any other quick, quick last minute things? And then I'm going to sign off. Good night, Kyle. Oops. Mm. Good night. Is that Hope X1? I hope I'm saying that even close to something that resembles the way you would like it said. Okay, you guys, I am going to turn this off now, and um, I will be back in roughly three hours. So I'll see you all then. Okay, much love.